It's that time when bad is good and terrible is even better. Yes, it's this week's Zayus Report, your weekly look at cult movies and other crap. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, the movie man who knows it all and where the bodies are buried. His horrorness, the Prince of Slime, the original invader for Mars himself, the man for whom the phrase B-grade was invented. Welcome, Zayus. Well, welcome to a, another podcast. Yes, it's podcast 17 of, and yes, da, 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 we've changed our name. It's not the Zayas Report anymore. It's now the Cult Movie Show. Why? Uh, well, just as I decided, that's really about the reason why. Uh, and because nobody knew what the hell the Zayas Report was. So yes, we are now the Cult Movie Show. I am, of course, Warren, and with me in the virtual studio, as always, is Velvet. How are you, Velvet? Oh, my God. It's like one of my favorite months of the year. Well, it's been this month all month. It's October, but we're finally doing basically our Halloween episodes. I'm really super excited about the movies that we're talking about tonight, especially one movie. And I was like, okay, if we do this movie, we absolutely have to bring on one of my best friends on the planet who will defend the artistic integrity of this movie to the death, Count Kenny. So he's going to be on the show with us tonight. In fact, he's here with us right now. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Count Kenny. Hey, how's everybody doing, man? It's, it's like when I tell broads, get ready for a nice, deep, slow, mediocre, tired fucking. How y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing brilliantly. I'm doing brilliantly. It's uh, it's wonderful to have you on. Oh, fantastic. It's, uh, it's, it's just great. It's just great, you know, getting all these people together who just love cult cinema. Uh, yes. And, oh, I'm so excited. I'm, uh, oh, oh, man. oh, yeah. I watch a bunch of trash anyway. Like uh, I usually watch a bunch of crappy kung fu movies because they're all pretty much public domain, and and I love the shit out of the fucking sci-fi channel. So yeah, it's, it's, I'm all about fucking all kinds of odd movies. <laughs> oh, the sci-fi yeah. channel. I mean, if if I didn't, it's it's the only reason oh. I have cable TV. Is Isn't the sci-fi it great? Channel. Oh, fucking yeah. Shark is my hero. It's oh. Oh, I just absolutely love it. It's uh, uh, I mean I um I used to have the full cable package, you know, absolutely everything. You know, it was like a hundred and fifty dollars a month and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then I just sort of said, "Oh, bugger it! No, I got rid of everything except the sci-fi channel." <laughs> you need to have that. <laughs> not, not even just for the movie, the, the original programming. They had one show I think two years ago where it, it was so fucking. It, it was right when the movie Real Steel came out. Oh, so wow. they had these big, goofy kind of animatronic robots, and they had these fucking guys kind of say, hey, we're going to fight each other. But it was just so silly because they had Chris Jericho from wrestling come in and try to make oh, it look God. real. But it was so <laughs> damn scripted because they had the father and daughter who were persevering. And they had the guy from the streets who was, yeah, I'm making my fucking robots, yo. They had the <laughs> guy who was in the martial arts. It was, it was too damn transparent, man. It was, it was good shit, though. <laughs> the name is space it was great TV. Oh, it's it's oh it's fantastic. And there's nowhere else I'm gonna get my Doctor Who fix. So um oh. uh so Oh well, my god, Count quite... Kenny, you gotta get on board with Doctor Who. Doctor he hasn't introduced himself to the world of Doctor Who yet. Like he didn't know what a Dalek was, so you oh, gotta come on board with Doctor Who. I gotta come on board. I've been watching <laughs> since I was a teenager and um we still get it <laughs> live, like because um we've got a TV station here called the ABC, which has a it, it's very much like the BBC in Britain. So we get mm-hmm. it like within 12 hours of it going mm-hmm. to the air. Uh, Jesus. So it's, oh, that's cool. Um, oh, that's yeah. Cool. It's, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. It's, uh, but I've been watching it, you know, I still remember it when it was in black and white. Oh um, my god! Yeah, that, that's how long I've been watching it. It's so uh, <laughs> that's cool. I mean, if you if a show can hold your interest for that many decades, you know it's a good show. So you, you know, oh, I yeah. had a small interaction with that when I was a kid because it used to come on TV here. Um, one of the public mm-hmm. act or you know one of the like PBS channels or it was KTEH. I think they they always show that shit, but they show <laughs> one of the old ones. So I'd get fucking trash and stupidly high late night because they'd show that and this mask rider or, or fucking Japanese where the guy turns into a bug thing and he kicks the shit out of people. <laughs> so I don't know. Or, or, or Kikaida, it was like he was half red and half blue and he'd just beat the holy hell out of these fucking people in bad costumes. So oh I'd get God. trash and watch that. But then they'd show Doctor Who 
and usually my buddy would be sitting there and we'd just be fucking stoned to the gills. <laughs> and we didn't understand a bit of it, but I, 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 it was that and there was an, a, another thing. It was two English things that we just confused. It was that and the, the hitchhikers thing in my jig. Oh, the hitchhikers all, all I know, of the galaxy. Yeah. yeah. All I know, there was a guy with a rainbow <laughs> scarf. He was an old guy. And there was a, there, there was a fucking... There, there was, I think there was some guy who had four arms like Goro. I can't remember no more, but my, my okay. memory is really loose for that whole thing. It's, franchise. it's, um, it, it comes from a very famous book. Uh, well, actually, a couple of books. And, mm-hmm. uh, there's actually more than one book. There's Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, The Restaurant at the End of the Universe. Um, and it's, um, they're just, it's just a fantastically funny story. It's not meant to be serious. It's a comedy. Uh, but, oh, God, it is so good. If, if people haven't seen the original, British production of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, watch it seriously. Hunt it down, huh. or hunt down the books. The books are really, really good. It's a great story. Um, it is so funny. It just oh yeah. But anyway, anyway, we are digressing, and we haven't even started. <laughs> um, so I just slaughtered there. That's so good. Um, now, um, because we have got uh, a bit of a Halloween show. And um, so we've got three Mm -hmm. uh, great movies lined up. Basically, the three of us got together and sort of said, right, you know, which ones are we going to talk about? And they're maybe not what you're expecting. They're definitely not what you're expecting. Uh, But we've got some great ones. And we're going to start with a fantastic classic. I say that in the loosest sense of the word. Um, (laughs) Monster Squad from 1987. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, man. Monster Squad. What it's were an you movie. <laughs> What wow. were you thinking Velvet when you suggested Monster you, Squad? Okay. Oh wow. Okay. Wow. I didn't know you were going to come at me like that. But, um, no, I kind of feel the same oh. way. This is a movie I could not wait to watch this. I was like, "Oh, oh, cuz we, we all got to pick one, you know, for our Halloween special." And I'm like, "Oh my god, we have to do the Monster Squad." So then, you know, we pick it and I go watch it. I haven't watched this movie since probably yeah, probably since the 80s. 1987 movie, The Monster Squad. Yeah, it's definitely um, not held up. <laughs> but yeah, it's a group of young monster fanatics. So it's a group of young kids. And, yeah, I like start. Yeah, it's a group of young kids. <laughs> and they think that they're that monsters are real, but then it turns out monsters are real. And because they're the only ones that know monsters are real, this little group of little boys and one young girl are the ones that have to save the world. So, <laughs> that's a quick wow. summary. Uh, wow, it's, what an epic story. I mean, <laughs> we, should, we, we should just, for anyone that hasn't seen oh. it, we'll just give you a very, very, very quick uh, brief rundown. So, obviously, from 1987 and directed by uh, Fred Decker, um, who, who's, an interesting, <laughs> who's an interesting character because he worked on Godzilla 1985 and quite a number of, you know, sort of amazing movies. Uh, but, yes, it follows um, Count Dracula, who basically <laughs> decides uh, he wants to get... Tuxedo. <laughs> he, wants, <laughs> he wants to get the gang back together. Um, gang. So... <laughs> Um, so anyway, oh, it starts. It, it basically starts in what is it? Uh, I think it's meant to be eighteen eighty seven. And Vel Hels, uh, what is it? Vel Helsing. I always get his name wrong. Is hunting down Count Dracula, and Count Dracula has found this special magical uh, amulet, uh, which he can use to basically create evil all over the world. Now. Van Helsing tracks him down. They say some special <laughs> words through a virgin, and they and, and most of everyone gets sucked into limbo and, and disappears. Well, we then we then cross to a hundred. <laughs> we then cross to a hundred years later, and we find oh, this Jesus. group of school kids uh, who have formed the Monster Squad, and of course uh, Count Dracula. <laughs> is trying to get the gang back together, as we said. And the gang, <laughs> the gang is, of course, himself, uh, the Wolfman, um, the Mummy, uh, Gillman, who is basically the creature from the Black Lagoon. From the Black Lagoon. And, 
<laughs> and, and finally, Frankenstein's monster. And <laughs> they try, of course, to take over the world, but of course, the kids are there to stop them. Um, I've got right. to admit, this reminded me so much of the Goonies. It really right, did. Say, oh, does it really? Does it? It's like a Goonies <laughs> Halloween special, isn't it? Like a shitty one. <laughs> Oh, uh, can, can we swap out uh, Sloth and put in Frankenstein? Because it's they're the same goddamn character. Oh it's, my god! Uh, it's so. What, what was what was everybody's thoughts? I mean, like when you you oh, rewatch man. this, um, what did um, everyone think? Well, first off, this movie was every horror monster fan's dream at the time. Like, you know, I mean, it really was. I mean, when are you going to see Dracula, the Wolfman, Frankenstein, the Mummy, even the Creature from the Black Lagoon? I mean, the whole oh, um, Universal Studios 50s classic monsters roster in one movie, but modernized and in color. So, I mean, it sounds good on paper. It sounds fucking exciting, right? But unfortunately, like... They have so little screen time for each of the characters, and there's not a lot of character development for any of these. But also, why on earth is Dracula the fucking ringleader of all monsters? <laughs> that's what's really weird. He's wearing it's a tuxedo. Like he, yeah, uh, well, it's, and that's the thing, too. Like, this movie is essentially, to me, it's essentially uh, a love letter to the Universal Studios 50s horror movie classic monsters. Like I said, so it's definitely a love letter to these. And they have the, the 50s look, except for Frankenstein. That one's definitely an, a slightly updated version. But I mean, like, yeah. all the others are very recognizable as what they're supposed to be. And even Dracula is, basically, he's the Bela Lugosi version of Dracula. He's got the tuxedo. <laughs> he's yes. got the cape. He does not have the fucking Hungarian Slick accent. back hair. Yeah, he Blah. does not have the Hungarian Blah. accent. <laughs> he, he speaks a very clean English. But uh, the other thing is um, this movie bombed when it came out because um, it got a PG-13, which was a new rating at the time. And I think this movie really wanted that rating because they wanted it to, to be like, okay, this is not just parental guidance, but this is also not an R-rated movie. It's very low on gore for the type of movie that it is. So it's that really weird in-between area. And I don't think they knew who their audience was either because the kids in this movie are fucking rotten. They are cussing. They are taking <laughs> oh, pictures of women. Yeah, you They're homo. Taking... You're homoing out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. Love... They're taking pictures of women through windows and then... Nah. Blackmailing them with nude pics, which is fucking nice. illegal today. But at the time in the movie, that was hilarious. But now you look at that, like, I was watching that scene where they're, like, trying to coerce this girl and they're helping them fight monsters. And they're basically like, look, we got naked pictures of you. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> that is, wow, that's uh -huh. highly illegal behavior now. Like, I can't believe it. And this is one of those movies that... Uh, so many kids saw this movie because there's kids in it. Mm. So, like, you would show people the box cover, the VHS, and be like, hey, can we rent this movie? And your parents are like, oh, okay, you're having a sleepover. Yeah, you guys can watch this movie. And your parents would not check the movie one time because they're like, oh, it's got a bunch of kids on the box cover. It can't be that scary. It's got kids smoking. It's got kids fighting. It's got kids cussing. It's got kids killing. <laughs> It's not a movie for kids yeah, at all, it does. but a ton of kids have watched it. So, yeah, I'll let you guys get a word in edgewise. That's just some of my initial thoughts. <laughs> it's. I, I mean, I, I, I've got to admit that. I mean, Dracula has to really be the leader because he's the only one who can actually form a coherent sentence. Uh, I mean, <laughs> the, 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 I didn't like that. You know, you know the, I, I don't. The, the Wolfman can't speak. The Mummy just moans. Uh, Gilman just blows bubbles. And Frankenstein's monster basically just sort of says, I don't know, you know, I mean, he's Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. So he's mentally he challenged. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a retard. He's mentally he's a challenged. He's a slothing potato. <laughs> <laughs> mentally challenged, definitely. Give, give him a bronze medal at the Special Olympics. He's the fucking the, the loser. Oh, uh, boy. He goes yeah. Frank. Yeah, but it doesn't. It doesn't quite go right. I mean, for Dracula, I mean, certain things do go wrong. I mean, for instance, uh, Frankenstein's monster changes yeah. sides and actually sides with the kids with the monster squad and actually tries mm -hmm. to help stop Dracula and his evil plan to take over mm -hmm. the world. Um, it's uh, the Gill Man basically does absolutely nothing apart from stand there and blow bubbles. I mean, he really doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. It is disappointing. It um, is disappointing. Yeah. I, mean, I was 
Yeah. I was excited to see the Gill Man, who's basically the creature from the Black Lagoon. But it was just, yeah, that was just fan service. That was just like, here, we got all the monsters in one movie. Here you go. Oh, yeah. did you see them? That was it. Wasn't that great? Like, <laughs> Wait, was this, was, this, was this by Universal? Because cause I um, know no. for because Universal characters are public domain, like, for the most part, except the looks. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't make Frankenstein look like that or Dracula with his dumb tuxedo and his fucking medallion. It has to be Universal doing it because that's a licensed look for them. I mean, if you make that movie now, you can do it. You just can't make them look like that. That's why you have the shitty true. Dracula untold. Right. Where, where he, right. he's fucking Orlando Bloom with a set of dumb armor. And then you have all these other crappy <laughs> movies. <laughs> you know, remember the last Van Helsing flick? And then they had oh god, that was Dracula. Terrible. Dracula oh, in god. there looked like he looked like Yanni's sidekick gonna gonna sing a song. It, oh it was my a, god! A, no, the Frankenstein was the worst. His head was open. At one point, it's raining, and I'm like, it's raining on his brain. It was literally <laughs> raining. Anyways, yeah, that movie was so fucking bad. Yeah, so that, I'm, that made I'm, the I'm, Monster I'm, Squad look like opera. It was just, <laughs> it just that was that. Was I, you see, I, I enjoyed parts of it, but but. I have a weird recollection of that stupid fucking movie. Right when oh, I, I saw the movie, yeah, I was expecting fucking Dracula to be Ricardo Montalban, and then the what? stupid fucking father, the cop, you know, the 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 the, the, the cop guy, was like, yeah, I'm your yeah, dad. Yeah. I thought that was fucking Eric Roberts, because I, I thought I saw for a long time, like after that movie, he did fucking Best of the Best, which is one of my favorite shitty movies. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. So <laughs> right after this, he does fucking Best of the Best. With Tommy Lee, and he kicks ass. So I huh. thought that. was kind of springboard in the best of the best and i remember fucking dracula you know not not looking like patrick duffy off of baywatch and then <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> expected him you know ricardo montalban like a hey, fantasy island kind of sound but I, I, I was, I, I, wait but hey you know what Right when I saw the movie, to me, the biggest star in the movie was fucking Kevin Arnold, you know, from fucking The Wonder Years. He played the bully. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> like, oh, shit, Kevin Arnold. <laughs> Kevin. That's right. The, yeah. well, well, the, thing, the thing that I was actually going to say, I mean, do you think, um, I, I mean, you're, like, do you, what's your favourite? The old world of monsters, you know, the old concepts of, of Dracula or the modern, you know, like you were saying mm. just before. I love that this is a modernized version of the classic Universal Studio horror monsters, but it, they did such a disservice. Like, they just, the character depth isn't there. It just, yeah, it's it's either go full on or don't do it at all. And they totally half-assed it on this one, I think. They were just so excited to get all the characters into the movie, but then, like, the mummy gets unraveled, the creature from Black Lagoon gets shot. I did like what they did with the Wolfman. I did not like the way the Wolfman looked. Because let's, let's face it, like, when he turned wolf, his face looked kind of, I don't know, off? Like, I don't know, kind of like a cat. I don't know. It just it was weird. Yeah, he but was, he was liked, really weird. Yeah, he's weird looking. Yeah, he's weird looking, wasn't he? But I like what they did with him because they hit it home that you can only kill the wolf man with a silver bullet. And the kids are trying to be like, oh, no, there's other ways you could kill him. And at one point, they actually blow him up with dynamite. And, I mean, that's an actually pretty cool scene. I know. You know they're fi- they're fighting in a building. They manage to stuff a stick of dynamite in his uh, waistband of his pants. They push him out the window, and right when he goes out the window, he blows up in midair. That's actually a pretty cool effect. But then they also have this cool effect of he's dismembered in different pieces on the ground, and they all just slide back together, like, you know, totally supernaturally. And he reforms, and he howls, and, you know, he's back in the game. And so you got to take him out with a silver bullet. But- um <laughs> the the, the yeah, weird thing, well, the weird thing about it is, that it's like you know how like they're all getting themselves ready. So they're in the workshop at school and they're making wooden stakes and all this sort of stuff. You know, mm-hmm. to, the kids are doing all this to get ready to fight the monsters. But um, but the really amazing thing I thought about it is that they melt down the silverware right from right, so, you know, and uh, and then they make a silver bullet. But, but the whole idea is that like. What caliber is it? How, like they don't have a gun <laughs> or anything, right? Like. And, and, and then, and then, so, and so, when they when they go to shoot, like um, uh, you know, Wolfman, it's like the bullet they made just happens to be the exact same caliber as the gun that they pick up on the street. <laughs> I never even thought about that. That's oh my god. That's a, there's a lot of um really weird plot holes in this movie like that too. It's just really uh, unfortunately as much as I like this movie, like 
nostalgically, I like this movie. As a child that should not have been watching this movie, I like this movie. As an adult, like, my logical side's like, wow, this is really poorly written. I've actually found the story, as an adult, a little confusing. I was like, because, you know, the movie starts off with fucking um, these two guys in a plane, and they know they're flying dead cargo. And they, they even mention it at one point, like, oh, they're dead, but I'm still going to go check on them. Too. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to go check on him, and all of a sudden, like, that's when they introduce Dracula, and he turns into a bat, <laughs> and he opens up the trap the door, lame. and coffins, coffins fly out of the plane and land conveniently in a swamp where the creature from the Black Lagoon happens to live, and, and yes, it's just I like, know. what? I, and I, then, like, uh, and then, okay, they, one they, really they, quick, they the whole thing that. with Dracula being the ringleader and, like, the master of all monsters, like, he is so excited to see Frankenstein's monster when he opens up that coffin and he's in there, and Old the way friend. he brings him back to life, he has that fucking uh, walking stick, and yes. he pulls out little metal antennas, and he at- attaches yes, them to, like, cane. battery cords. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this pimp cane, he, and he and he attaches these fucking metal nodules to Frankenstein, and then there's a lightning storm, and they bring him, like, they bring him back to life. And I'm, I, just, what the hell? What? But it's what? it's it's just also. Did you, did you see how he had his hand out like he was reaching out for him too? Like, like he was like, hold on, <laughs> I, I got you here, buddy. He looked buddy. at him like, like a father stop. looking at a son. He looked fucking at him like a father stop. looking at his son. <laughs> Ham dicky movie. <laughs> And then they had they had the fucking not Corey Feldman brothers over there fucking trying to be be little young bastard fake Corey Feldman. The movie was was, was fuck. Oh, I know. <laughs> In fact, oh, I, I almost I almost thought it was Corey Feldman for a second. Where, <laughs> yeah, just for a split second, I thought, hang on, is that Corey Feldman? But no, of course it's not. But I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. And, but I did love the scene, though. I just wonder what you guys thought at towards the end, where, because of course, they have to find a virgin to read these special lines right. into yeah. the amulet to open up yeah. the, the the wormhole to limbo, <laughs> right? And um, so, but anyway, but they say so they get the they get the sister, and they they sort of say, "Are you a virgin? Are you a virgin?" And like you said, Velvet, they blackmail her into saying that she's a virgin. Well, she reads the words, and nothing happens. And I said, I thought you said you were a virgin. And she, what does she say? What is it? She what? goes, well, Steve, but he doesn't count. Counts. I know. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I, just, I like how she, she was just... a complete dit. <laughs> I like that. She was a, oh. Oh, just a, just a blithering pudding head. That was, that was so good. I just love that. Steve didn't count. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and also there's that scene um, with what the the character they call scary German guy. They never give the guy a name. They call him scary German yeah. guy. And like, so basically they have Van oh, Helsing's sh- diary, geez. which is in German, and it has the whole you know spell or incantation that they have to read so they can open up a hole and suck out all the evil in the world. Basically, so they make friends with scary German guy because nice. he's the only one that can read German. And at one point. There is a fucking reference to the Holocaust, which is basically saying humans are yep. the real monsters. Did, did, did like, you see how pandering that was? Yeah. yeah, I'm it, like, wait, it, it is this was movie for kids? <laughs> like, it I was, did not catch that when I was a kid at all. It was, I did not catch that at all when I yes, was a kid. I was like, oh my god. It is yeah. it is fascinating because it's like because the kids believe in monsters, and when they're talking to the old guy and. And and I think the old guy says something like, "Oh, you know, you know a lot about monsters or something," and, uh, and, and then they look back at him, and then and he sort of says, uh, "Yes, I think I know a lot about monsters too." And as he closes the door, you actually oh, and, you, and you see the tattoo on his arm, and Jeez. it's yeah. um, it was. I, I've got to admit, it just really did seem very. I, I mean, I understand the statement, but it really seems so out of place. Oh, and 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 this is this movie didn't know what it was. <laughs> this movie didn't know what it was. It didn't know if it was a kids' movie. It didn't know if it was supposed to be for classic horror fans. It didn't know if it was supposed to be. I mean, it it really this movie. They don't know what they were trying to do. I don't know if they had too many writers. They had two writers, and I don't know if they were just like uh, sibling rivalry trying to outdo each other, and it just turned into this weird movie <laughs> with too much going on. And I don't know. It's I like how they did the. I like the whole Red Dawn kind of thing they did with the fat pudgy kid, where when he shoots the stupid fucking, uh, <laughs> the fucking uh, the creature black from the black monster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he shoots him, and all, all of a sudden he becomes a fucking man. He's like, yeah, that's right. No, my name is 
is fucking Piggy, whatever the fuck he says. And he copied <laughs> his, his name was his name was Horace. Yeah. Oh, I actually wanted to talk about him really quick. So his name was Brent Chalum, and he didn't really do a lot of Hollywood work after that. And he actually died at the age of twenty two from oh, pneumonia. Yeah, oh, he wow. was studying law in Las Vegas, and I was like, oh wow, how crazy! And I was like, what well, what a nice uh, legacy for him to leave it behind that he's part of a classic cult film horror film <laughs> from the 80s and what a nice thing to be remembered for but yeah it's uh, just baffling you never know when you're going to go age 22 from pneumonia wow. but yeah yeah i was i was surprised when i was looking up um just to see what the cast has been up to and i was like damn what, what, some people yeah. are still working actors didn't what, that movie to, to to you guys though seem like a, a, it was filled with a bunch of like bootleg versions of people you you expect him to be somebody else. Like for some reason you had the you had the fake Corey Feldman kid. You had the yes. fake Eric Roberts dad. They were all stereotypes of yep. movie stereotypes essentially. <laughs> they weren't you that the cop, good. It was, you have the black cop cracking jokes. You got yeah, the serious dad who works too much. You have, <laughs> she died. You yep. have the fat Patrick kid. Goes, you have the even... smart kid. <laughs> when, the, when the black cop dies, his car explodes. And his oh, yeah, that's where he got blown up. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. But it is, I mean, it, it definitely yeah. is. I mean, there's like, you've got Lethal Weapon in here. You've got the Doonies in here. You've got, you know, all these different, um, you know, all the, 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 the Feldman, you know, comedies. It, it, everything is, is thrown into, into this. It's like... It, it, they're almost like sort of saying, right, what movie and what genre can we rip off to throw into this? You know, um, it, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. But I, I, I do love it, though, when I, I think they're being attacked by the Wolfman. And what is he says? Kick him in the gonads. Oh, we say, they say nards. In the nards. I don't, think that, I don't even think that was 80s slang. Do you remember that being that no, 80s nard was slang? Never, that was, was never a thing. Here. Was yeah, that was just balls. a thing for that movie that they were calling, yeah, they were calling balls nards. Kick them in the nards. Wow, <laughs> Wolfman has nards. <laughs> and I was just like, is this, did, I, I don't think I ever worried about. Did you guys get how Wolfman had the whole I'm a tortured kind of guy thing? Like, yeah. I yep. actually thought oh, he was a really good actor. I actually thought he did really good. Because, the but cliche that, is just he, fucking cringe. Oh, but I, I love it because that that's totally reminiscent of the classic Wolfman because that's what his character was, was that he was just like, oh, God, I know I'm a monster and I can't control it. Because when he's a human, he's a regular good guy. But then he's this monster that goes around killing people. I mean, that's, you know, I thought the actor was really good. Handed, like, everything in there seemed like it was too damn heavy handed to be taken seriously. Like the proportion of. Uh, of trying to be hammy and fucking like blah, I'm Dracula, but it's, it's a it's fucking Patrick <laughs> people a watch being like, hey guys, my name is Dracula. I'm from Wyoming. Like, <laughs> is it Halloween? He's dressed like Halloween Dracula. He has a dumb medallion, and I get it's a Bela classic. Lugosi. That yeah, was but, the but, Bela but Lugosi. Every, Dracula. But if you look at everybody else, they're, 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 there's like subtle updates. E- even the fucking uh, creature from the Black Lagoon looks kind of cool. He has his whole. He's more reptilian. He cool. Eyes are bugged yeah. out. He. Slit. I thought he looked cool. cool. The mummy looks like a decayed mummy. You can't really do much. He, I mean, he was a yutz anyway. Frankenstein <laughs> had, had the big, the big stupid boots on. You know, the, the, you know, he was, you know, he wasn't that tall because they they fucked up and he showed his dumb shoes with the fucking. I didn't get lips. why they did the shoes like that either. I was like, he's already a big guy. Why does he need platform shoes? I didn't get well, that you know, either. I, I thought that was because fucking Herman Munster. Because like, really, <laughs> Herman yeah. Munster was known for that shit. He it could be shoes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know it, it is it is kind of weird, but it just just watching this just really struck me. There's um, um, I mean, if if uh, I know a lot of people, you know, listening to this show will remember uh, British cl- classic British comedies like Monty Python and The Goodies, and there's <laughs> a, and there is there's a fantastic episode of The Goodies when John Cleese from Monty Python does a guest appearance on The Goodies, and his mm-hmm. only one line in the show is he just looks at the camera and goes kids show and and i and i just remembered that when i was watching this it's like what you know what is this mo- yeah, is this movie for kids is it for adults is it for families like Confusing. what is it you know it's it's like i just don't think they'd actually worked out who this movie Mm-mm. was aimed at when they made it 
<laughs> I know, exactly. Well, hey, did you did I, you see the? Did you guys notice the forced fucking um stressful relationship between the the, uh, the cop and his wife? It's like, yes, yeah, is, is it your job again? What do you mean my job? I'm a cop, damn it! The whole fucking <laughs> stupid cop movie, your husband and wife routine, it was there too. Like Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. they had a lot of cliches. And the only thing they didn't satisfy in this movie were ethnic cliches. They did not have any. Everybody in this movie is Caucasian. <laughs> You, you know, you had Ernie Hudson, the cop, but he, oh, he got, died. In the we've got the call. Except for him. Except for him. Uh, well, I guess he was supposed to take care of all the ethnic token cliches. So, yeah, you had your black yeah. uh, black cop. Ernie Hudson as Danny Glover. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's it's almost like, I, I actually think it's like they came up with all these multiple plot lines and then gave each plot line literally about 30 seconds. And then that was it. So, yeah. you know, like instead yeah. of having two or three plot lines you can follow through the whole movie, they've got 20 and they're all running simultaneously. Yeah. And so you'd never have any time to explore one or the other. It's right. Crazy. No character depth. You know, no just, character depth. Just when depth. you said that, I just realized something. That movie is almost ahead of its time because if you think about it, that is what all those fucking, you know, scary movie one, two, and three, Meet the Spartans and all those stupid fucking spoof movies. <laughs> It, it, yep. If you look at the pacing of those movies, how they do all kinds of different shit all at once, and they're they're kind of there, it's just like this Monster Squad shit. Just yeah, this movie is really situation. quickly paced. Yeah, this movie is yeah. really quickly paced because they knew they were like, oh, we only have an hour and a half, and we got to Well, they don't even it, actually. This movie doesn't even go for an hour and a half. It goes for an hour and twenty two minutes. It was so, quick. I mean, that, yeah, lo- yeah. It's got a lot of characters. It's got a lot of story. It's trying to tell, and it doesn't really know how to tell it. Yep. This, this, so. you, you even had the fucking the, the stupid scene from Angels in the Outfield where the fucking father and the son are sitting on a rooftop. Oh, yes. And the son <laughs> sitting there, you know, watching a game or watching a movie. And, and his father rolls up with some Burger King like, hey, you know, I know you've been up here. And I said, no, but here's your Burger King pass. Like, Shut up. This is, this is too much. I, oh, my goodness. It's um, and also, I mean, like the whole focus on virginity in this movie and at age seven, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. The whole sexual overtones are really strange for. So this movie definitely wasn't supposed to be for children. But like your cast. Had, oh, Dracula had to force him. Remember? Oh, my God. Yeah, he had Dracula yes. had, he had, he had the fucking wolf man tied up. He said, hey, I drugged you. You're going to be asleep. But behave because we're gonna go out to eat later on, and there's three <laughs> girls hiding in a fucking closet, and he just goes to fucking dick them all down and then bite their neck. It's yeah, a, no, you're totally right. I, rape, I, rapist Dracula. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, they got sexual coercion in here via blackmail. They got a they got rapist Dracula. Well, though, mind you, that is, <laughs> but that is, <laughs> but that is what Count Dracula does, though. I mean, Count right, Dracula right, always right. gets Has his been a sexual um, character. He, oh, he's a sexual character. Yeah, I mean. Count, and, Count Dracula has well, always we, been we, sexual. When you yeah, they can't out, tell the story without him. Here's one thing about Dracula. He has power to dig this. He was too much of an average man because he, he throws fucking dynamite, right, at a treehouse. And, so and, 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 and then minutes after, what does he do? Minutes after, he starts blowing shit up with his mind and flying around the goddamn city. Why didn't he just do that? In, what, what are you doing with that fight? Well, this, that, it's, uh, I have to this, admit, this is the only time I've ever seen Dracula portrayed in a movie where he doesn't go around <laughs> biting people and drinking their blood. He walks around with sticks of dynamite blowing shit up. I mean, <laughs> he's a cartoon just, villain. I <laughs> know. He's trying to throw the train trash and, and fucking waxing his mustache. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's a near dwell. It's Yeah, this is... <laughs> yeah, and, and, I, and I really, I, I don't know, in some ways, I just wanted him to have that Eastern European accent, you know, and he, I know, he, said, and he doesn't, it would have made sense, and, I know. And, and the old man, I, I thought the old fucking Auschwitz guy, I thought, oh shit, look, that's gonna be goddamn Van Helsing, because that would have made sense to me, or some shit, because hey, <laughs> this is what I'm looking at you kids, and, and, and remember this, the stupid fucking fake goddamn um the kid he's writing down alucard Ooh, that means oh dragon. god no just shut up yeah here. there's oh, a, no. so many plot holes in this movie like for me the whole thing with dracula knew everything and nothing at the same time it was so confusing to me because i'm kind of like because how did he know the kid ed- ended up with the fucking um with the fucking Van Helsing's diary that has this incantation in it. And then how did he know the kid's phone number to try to call him and say, hey, I want to buy your book? <laughs> it just... 
Although, Why? actually, oh, know this shit? yeah, but he I'll, knows I'll the address. Sort of... he, he drove there directly with his ghost car. Remember, he knows. Yeah. He's got a ghost it's car. Fast. I know. And how <laughs> did he know about the treehouse? How did he know where the kids, yeah. the kids' treehouse to blow he it up? They, and... He knew where but, they hung and... out, and he had his sticks of dynamite ready. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I'll, I'll give, I'll, I'll give, I'll give Dracula a bit of a pass on one of them because. In a sense that, you know, um, Dracula is meant to be, like the character of, the modern character of Dracula anyway, is meant to be very, uh, almost omnipresent. He has that ability to be able to read minds, read thoughts, mm. to be able to coerce people's emotions, feelings. So I saw, okay. so I, I can sort of get that idea that he would just automatically know where people live and so forth. But what I don't get like, yeah. he turns into a bat sometimes and flies around, but in this movie, he decides, no, he's going to drive a car. I mean, <laughs> he's car. driving a, a car. car. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's a ghost car, and he has a pit <laughs> cane, and oh, he has dynamite. Oh, oh my God. You know, and, just... oh, and, it's, and, it, and it also plays with that classic thing that they always get wrong in, in either if it's sci-fi or horror or whatever. In the concept, it's a ghost car, so we can drive through things, you know, so where they almost have a head-on collision, but, of course, they drive through it because it's a ghost car. Well, if it can drive through the car, it'd fall through the friggin' road, right? It'd be in the centre of the earth. It'd just keep going down. It, it's still, but it's, it's still obeying the laws of physics with its fucking ghost tyres. It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, oh, oh Jesus. My God. What a car, oh, you know? Wow, yeah. This, uh, Like I said, I like this movie nostalgically as a child, but as an adult, it's like if you... You analyze it. You're like, wow, this is a steaming pile of nonsense. It just makes no sense. Well, <laughs> I know that they actually there was there was a TV show that actually addressed this very point, and it was um, you know Stargate, uh, the Stargate TV um, series SG One, and where there's an episode where they're able something happens to them, they're able to walk through walls and and all this sort <laughs> of stuff, and they actually turn to each other like halfway through the show and say. How come we can walk on the floor? <laughs> and, and then they just sort of say, uh, uh, whatever, and they keep going. So, like, I do, I, I always love that they actually address the idea. You know, <laughs> they didn't yeah. have an explanation. The they kind of went, we know it. what you're thinking. Yeah. We know what you're thinking, but we don't know either. So, fuck yeah. it. <laughs> so, so what does is, what is everybody sort of sum up? Do, do we recommend that people actually <laughs> go and have a look at Monster Squad? <laughs> I, I have to admit, um, I think it's still worth checking out because I'm, I'm a girl, so I still get a little tear in my eye at the end when Frankenstein's monster gets sucked into the fucking, uh, hey, I'm a girl, I can't help it. I'm like, no, and he's like, bye, Phoebe. Oh. And, and like she throws her little stuffed animal and he catches the stuffed animal and he holds it and he gets sucked into the hole and I'm like, aw. And I'm like, is that a tear? Yes, it is. Damn it. Got oh. me again. Well, but, her friend's yeah, a rotting so. corpse that was powered by electricity. <laughs> Oh, goodbye. Well, smells putrid. They they definitely do play with that whole idea, don't they? Where you know where Frankenstein just the, the idea of Frankenstein's monster has changed so much from the original Mary Shelley's book mm -hmm. that the Frankenstein's monster now in in the way that it's often portrayed has nothing at all to do with with the mm -hmm. original story. I mean, there's there's nothing in common whatsoever. But no. it's um, but but then again, the whole idea is that you know the original idea of the monster is, yeah, the monster does kill some people, but he kills people in acts of revenge. He doesn't just go right. on rampages killing innocent people. For instance, right. like he's portrayed in the you know the Hollywood versions of of Frankenstein. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I agree with you. I like that. You know, I like that. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. He said you got a little tear in your eye too. It's okay. It'll be our yeah. Story. I always I always felt mm -hmm. sorry for Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> you know, I mean all the, I mean the original character. All he wanted was a girlfriend. But like, that's, yeah. that's 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 yeah. I mean half the that's story true. half the story that's oh. all it's about it's about him wanting a girlfriend um you know yeah, so exactly. uh, and exactly. then him hunting down what the a, people who've done him wrong bastard. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but, yeah, you I think his dick even understand. still works? What's he gonna do? Is, is it stuck in rigor mortis forever? Ew. I mean, Jesus Christ, Frank. Oh man, I never even thought about that. Well, actually, according <laughs> according according to Mary Shelley, um, he does have. His bits work because oh, wow. because if you remember in the story, um, <laughs> one of um, uh, one of the fears is that when he's going to create 
a female companion for the monster is that he's scared that they're going to start to reproduce. Oh my god! So, and that's one of the reasons why he doesn't he doesn't actually follow through and actually create a um, uh, uh, oh, create wow. a female a female companion. Huh. So, Interesting. yeah, I, that, I mean, the actual, I, I mean, I would say to everyone who hasn't actually seen, who's only ever seen Frankenstein on, or the story of Frankenstein and the monster in television or in movies, read the book. It's an amazing mm-hmm. story. Uh, it's been because, so long. It's been yeah. so long since I've read it. I need a refresher. But uh, yeah, The Monster Squad, I say go ahead and check it out. You know, it's definitely a love letter to Universal Studios classic horror monster roster so if you're a fan of classic 50s this is just another chance for you to see a little bit more material on them even though this is obviously not a true representation it's definitely a love letter to those characters oh it's a fun movie for sure so yeah thumbs up from everybody thumbs up from me Count- I did recommend it <laughs> oh well, that's true <laughs> that's true so count kenny thumbs up from you oh but i think we may have lost oh, our co-host we may have so. lost him oh that's all right let's see all right, we'll get his opinion in a second. Let's see. But what do you think, Warren? Did you um, like it? Yeah, I, I oh, actually, I'm here. Oh, cool. oh, there you go. Take care right. of something. <laughs> so, oh, um, so is it is it a thumbs up for you, um, Count Kenny, for uh, Monster Squad? I, I mean, I, I, I'll say this. I enjoyed noticing certain parts, like when I saw Kevin Arnold <laughs> and, and hearing the little the, the fucking jokes and being like, hey, you're a little homo and how mean the kids were. It reminded me how mean kids were supposed to be and – <laughs> you know, so a lot of that was was, was cool looking because I'm a big fan of watching things as time caps. Like, hey, you know, all this shit was cool and acceptable back then. Like, I love the Archie Bunker show. You know, all in the family because <laughs> you can get away with that, and now you can't. So I enjoy that aspect. But as as a movie, I, I think I watched it once and that was cool. I'm not going to be watching it again. <laughs> <laughs> now this definitely Jeez. will not be a yearly movie for me either. This was I yeah. haven't seen this in a couple of decades, and it just popped in my head, and I'm like, oh, this is perfect. And then I was like, what was I thinking when I was watching it? So. This is the Red Dawn effect for me where I, I had great memories of Red Dawn. Like that, I used oh, to fucking yeah. play stupid G.I. Joe toys. And then you know, when I rewatched it, it was just too fucking cheesy for me to enjoy. Uh, I <laughs> Red Dawn, I, a whole lot. what were they thinking? You know, what were they <laughs> seriously? They take a really classic idea, a really interesting idea from the 80s, and then go and create an absolute fucking piece of shit on toast um and and uh, you know and it's like yeah i mean what were they thinking with that you know mm. i mean is paranoia that alive that you can sell that movie now you know oh man i think you can now now you can <laughs> now the right time for, for russia jesus here it would. But see, I mean, the yeah. original movie sort of, I mean, in that sense, it, it, it was sort of kind of cool. The idea of World War Three, the Soviet Union invades the United States. It's sort yeah. of kind of like it's believable to a degree. Uh, well, it, not really. I mean, but but you can sort of, <laughs> but you'd sort of believe it in your mind. But then the whole idea is we then cross to the remake. North Korea invades the United States. Yeah. Yeah, right. Oh, you know, oh I mean, seriously, I mean... They got to buy some is- boats first, right? I mean, yeah, it's unrealistic, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's just it's it's just so it, it was just so ridiculous. I mean, I I would have almost have liked it if they had have just made it um uh made it a mythical country, you know, like mm. just don't even say who the country is and just play with mm. the story, uh, because it's a it's a fascinating. I mean. There's been, a, I mean, a lot of books have been written about these sorts of subjects and movies made. Australia made one um, uh, only recently. But the thing I loved about the Australian one was that they never said who the aggressor was. Like, it's just yeah. never mentioned. Uh, it's up to you to just make up your own mind who it is. And I thought if they had it done that in Red Dawn, it would have been better. Yeah, you could have done like a like a template of some sort of basic American kind of city with it, like you know how you play video games and Grand Theft has Liberty City and all this type of shit with their fictional cities and whatnot. It could have been done that way easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree, and I still I have no idea how we started talking about Red Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. it's, it's, cause it's a because it's a crappy bad. 80s movie just like fucking monster well, squad well, monster i suppose squad. i suppose that's right i mean monster squad does have such like you were saying Kenny, with that 
time capsule. Like this really mm-hmm. has such an eighties feel to it. You can just mm-hmm. you just feel it in the clothes and the dialogue and and just everything. And also you know? the overall, it's so sexist too. I mean, like I, I, <laughs> sexism was still alive today. But I mean, especially in that movie, the whole time like we need a virgin to read the incantation. We need a virgin. All those little boys were virgins. I guarantee it. But no, it has to be a girl. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I know. They're trying to do it ritualistically and traditionally because if you look at different cultures, if you're going to sacrifice, you don't sacrifice boys because that's not a, that's just how cultures do it. They're trying to be respectful to what would have been done by different kind of rights. You can't just say, hey, sacrifice boys. What culture <laughs> sacrifices boys? Those are, those, those are raises the guards in the goddamn temple who are watching a sacrifice and shit. Not <laughs> I, 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 think, I think the Aztecs were actually kind of cool. I think they just sacrificed everybody, actually. Yeah, they yeah. did. Um, they took hearts out. They did. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Heart. We poked holes in your argument. No, but uh, yeah, um, this movie is so wrong on so many levels. Totally politically incorrect today, which yeah, kind of makes it a gem to watch because that, you know, this got a PG-13 rating and that people were letting kids all over town watch it because they thought it was a kid's movie and the kids are fucking cussing and talking about sex and they're killing and they're smoking and (laughs) kids are coercing people. How how about that one super cool kid? How about that one really cool kid who all around? What the fuck was that? (laughs) He was was awesome, wasn't wasn't it? (laughs) Oh, I know. Talk about him really quick. He was basically a big fish in a small pond. He was hanging out with kids younger than him because it made him look cool. Did you check out his fucking leather coat? Did you see how he was? (laughs) Fucking leather coat. He was a was a sweet bike. Fucking attitude. (laughs) <laughs> but it's the, the, the other kids knew him in 1980. <laughs> Even the bully. Remember, Kevin Arnold didn't want a piece of him. He said, "Oh shit, there he is." Like, that's, what do you want? Sir? He was a badass. <laughs> but it's just but it's apparently, like, um, apparently he was fucking too because he wasn't a virgin, I guess. Yes. Oh, God. So, so, but it's like it's like uh, what is it? Arthur Fonzarelli in Happy Days. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but it, but it's but the, the crazy thing about Fonzie, you think about it, how inappropriate it is. I mean, you've got a guy who's meant to be in his mid twenties <laughs> hanging around with people who are actually fifteen or sixteen. Right. Exactly. Dance. You know. Exactly. Um, <laughs> you know. He's going to the prom his, with his motorcycle. Remember, he went to the prom. And he drove mm. his goddamn motorcycle through the fucking gym. Good <laughs> job. <laughs> Guaranteed wow. that gets you arrested in real life. See, this is that was Fonzie as a kid. See, this is uh, yes. he was in the Monster Squad. Squad. <laughs> <laughs> He's a badass. You see? Oh, and he was hanging way. out with younger kids. If you guys remember correctly, he was like junior high or yeah. high school, and uh, they were. Right. Oh he's been, he yeah, he's, been, he's meant to be two years older or something like that. Three yeah. years older, I think. Yeah, um, he was fucking smoking biker. <laughs> oh, oh dear me! This, this All movie. Right. All right, so yes, that was the Monster Squad from 1987. So look, I look, I would definitely say I think we all would say. Check it out, but maybe yeah. just once. You probably Perhaps don't once. need to watch it again. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, uh, you're, if you're younger, I, I think if you're younger and you don't, you have no remembrance of what that time era was. You should because that's that's it, it's it's a good almost parody of that time, like RoboCop was. Yeah. So it's really fun, like. <laughs> also, kids love this movie, and honestly, I think it's because kids don't understand this movie. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? There's a lot going on. <laughs> So, kids cussing yeah. and kids fucking shooting guns. It's, what else do kids want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a virgin. That's right. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Well, <laughs> well, okay. We will take a, a quick break and we'll be right back with our second movie uh, of the podcast. Oh, we are just careening off the track. This is going to be a long edit. Oh, God. That's staying in there. Okay. <laughs> the Only Funny to Us podcast with brand new episodes every Monday night at 8 at OnlyFunnyToUs.com. Now, movie number two, and oh my god, this is a good one. This I, I love this. I have to admit, I love this. Now, this this is Ticks from 1993, uh, directed oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. by um, uh, Tony Randell, and it is so good. It's so much fun. Um, you know, th- this is this is a creature feature which is just fun to watch. This. Even though it's from 1993, 
this sort of reminds me of what people like Asylum are making right now. Yeah. And, and yeah. I just, <laughs> just yeah, absolutely loved it. What, what was everyone's thoughts? And then we'll just give, give a brief rundown of what it is. Oh, my God. That <laughs> fucking movie, I have... I have a, a a thing where I had – that's been one of my favorite things since, like, fifth grade, I think, because me and my shitty buddy kind of split half on buying a dumb tape and got in the fights over who owned the stupid tape of it. <laughs> so, so that's always been a favorite of mine. It's, you will fight but, for uh, it. Uh, fight for but, but that fucking movie is, is great because everything that you want to see for, for, for fucking cliche characters but done properly where you can kind of laugh at it, but if you really think about it, you can almost take them seriously. Like, oh, it's a little sad when they die or whatever. It's great, which only really one dies if you, if you take note, I think. Mm. But, oh, yeah. um, my favorite part of it was fucking Carlton from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which, which I will tell anybody. <laughs> if you want to see anyone portray a rough and tumbled, troubled youth... Look at this motherfucker in this movie because for every every five seconds, he's recollecting something bad going down. Like, yeah, I should have brought my gun. Yo, yo, I should have never brought my dog to this fucking nightmare, yo. And, and he's always super fucking hardcore ghetto. Even his fucking hallucinations when he's hallucinating, he's in the goddamn hood and there's fucking rap music blaring in the background. I'm like, wow, dude, what are you... I know. They, 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 they couldn't sell it any harder than deal with him. And then you had Seth Green... Who played the fucking Columbine like school shooter? Who's kind of <laughs> you see the intro when when fucking when Carlton runs into him and they're like, "Yo, hey ho, let's shoot basketball or I'm gonna shoot you." <laughs> it's just, oh my god! Oh, no. it's, funny. it's oh, look, we should pro- we probably should just give people a bit of an idea about what this this movie is before we go oh, into any god. more depth. Um, so yeah. so basically, uh, it's from 1993, uh, as we said, and it sets. Uh, it starts off in Los Angeles, and he's set sort of in the I don't know what was you know like the bush outside Los Angeles. Oh, oh God, sorry, you guys, um, the forest outside. Um, <laughs> you guys don't say bush; you say forest. So, um, in the sort of in the forests, the mountain forests, of, I gather that are around Los Angeles. Are there forests mm-hmm. around Los Angeles? Or? No, they had to drive fucking far out. I guess they drew, drove up north. Does that she sound about right? She was filmed in Canada. <laughs> 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 LA. Um, but, um, but so a- anyway, so Toronto. What, oh, is that where they filmed it? <laughs> well, I think so they it kept, was. Like, they oh, kept talking about like LA it. in the movie. Like they were making it sound like they were in LA. But yeah, this was definitely not filmed so, in yeah, California. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes. Yeah, so obviously they start off in downtown Toronto, pretending to be Los Angeles, and exactly. um, and then head off <laughs> head off into the into the woods. And uh, basically, it's it's a group of uh, two adults who are basically running a um, uh, one of these. You know, get to terms yeah. with nature to help. S- you know, fix your problems and, and yeah, you know, yeah, for it's young a wilderness kids. retreat. You, yo. yeah. Wilderness retreat. Yo, or, uh, right. Troubled teenagers. Tumble young youths. And, yo, uh, yeah, exactly. Old, that's right. And, rich girl who's a, and um, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, they they take them off into the wilderness to you know to bond with nature, bond with themselves, and all the rest of it. But going on in this uh, woodland. Uh, Basically, um, well, dope growers, and uh, but they're, but they're mixing, they're mixing, they're mixing steroid, steroids with marijuana, and oh they're making God. this sort of super potent strength uh, marijuana. <laughs> And oh anyway, God. and it drips onto all these ticks, you know, like wood ticks that you get in the forest and so forth. And, uh, and it turns them into these super sized, super powerful, uh, ticks. And then, of course, they try to take over the forest, hunt all our, you know, campers down. Our campers have got to try to fight back and survive. It's the normal sort of stuff that you would expect. But there are some differences in this. And, um, I suppose we'll get to that in a minute. So, Velvet, what did you think when you watched Ticks? Now, somehow I miraculously never saw this movie. I never heard of it. And I was just like, oh, God, what am I getting into? And, yeah, I was not disappointed. <laughs> I I couldn't take the movie seriously, but it's always not a serious film. This is definitely a creature feature. It's just... um Exaggerated fake ass gore, giant bugs. Uh, <laughs> I know. know sur- <laughs> it's a survival film. It's um, for me, the one who stole. There's actually two actors that stole the movie that just like stole the scene every time they were on screen. It was Clint Howard, which he was kind of like the one that ex- that was kind of like the 
he was a character that basically showed you what was going on with these fucking bugs because he's the one that gets it in, in the beginning. Like he's the one that they fucking the bugs lay eggs inside of him, and his face is exploding with bugs hatching, and he's just like, "I'm infested." <laughs> <laughs> I know. And for me, he just stole the scene when he did that shit. I was like, "Okay, this is the best part of the whole movie for me." Seeing Clint Howard, that just uh, he pops up in so many movies, and he's always a treasure to watch. And like his acting was so convincing. He just this poor guy. You really felt for him, and you were so gross out and repulsed to buy him and then also as count kenny mentioned fucking alfonso ribeiro better known as carlton from the fresh prince of bel-air he, every scene he's in he's just such a fucking clown but he, yeah he just, just rage right <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> rage See, and his name young in the movie hood. is panic i'm like what the fuck kind of name is that <laughs> he's a hoodlum uh, just, he's a hoodlum yo <laughs> oh he was like such a wannabe hoodlum it was so sad he was such a sad black stereotype <laughs> yeah, oh, he just, was. <laughs> I should never brought my dog this nightmare, yo. <laughs> oh my goodness! So yeah, I this for me for me this movie's once is enough. You guys crack me up because you're like, oh, this movie's so good. We've seen it so many times. Once was enough for me. I, this movie's currently on my hard drive after tonight is getting deleted. So. <laughs> oh, that's so unfair. Oh. That's so cruel. Just just buy a bigger oh. hard drive. Buy a bigger hard drive. Because, good job, good job, you good know. job, of Monster Squad. By the way, just let me know. It's a yeah. it's fantastic. <laughs> Love that movie. <laughs> but no, I, 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 mean, I, I loved it. I mean, and some of the things too. Oh, we also should say we were talking about Clint um, Howard. For anyone who doesn't know, Clint Howard is, of course, the brother of the super famous Ron Howard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, um, and and then, of course, we mentioned Seth Green before, of course, as well. Uh, who, of course, everyone will know these days. Um, it's I, I, I loved it because it, it's like we were just saying before, Count Kenny. It's it's just it reminds me so much. Of, of all the creature features which are coming out of um, the asylum and, and companies like that right now. You know, it's like it's got humour, it's got monsters, but the monsters are pretty crappy, but it's still, <laughs> you know. Um, it, and, and, but it's, it's, it's not too serious. There are little in-jokes. There are, you know, it, like, like with all of these movies, there's almost a level of sort of dark comedy, you know, that's thrown into them. And, and I, I just loved it. <laughs> yeah, it's, to me, it's one of those movies that I, I I gotta keep going back to because there's always something I'm gonna laugh at. Like today, I when, last time I saw it, I noticed one thing was that the father, or or, or you know the um, the one who's the chaperone, that's that was that was Beecher from Oz. If I remember, I remember it was Oz from HBO. Beecher was a character who got taken in by the neo Nazi Schillinger, and he got forced to wear pumps, and he got fucked every other day. Until oh he snaps one day yep. and beats up wow. children and shits on him. Wow. So it, 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 so every time I see this guy, wow. I'm like, hey, they're going to fucking beat you. What's well, going on, bro? Was, but he was also in House, wasn't he? Huh? Is, oh. is, isn't, oh. I, I'm sure he's in House. I'm not the sure. The TV show I House. To, I have to take a look I, right I'm quick. not sure because I just know him from Oz where, where he was the fucking prag. Yeah. Which fish one <laughs> <It's>, um, <laughs> but some, But there are also, like, we're talking about the, you know, like the two chaperones. So we've got one who's a father Holly. and, and he takes his, his daughter along. And, um, and then we've got another woman and they're meant to be in a relationship together. But the, what do you think, guys? I mean, are they the worst camp counsellors or chaperones in the world? I mean, they're just letting yeah. these kids run around and roam free. They're not looking after them. They're more concerned about having sex in the cabin yep. with themselves. They're busy fucking. You know? It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like they're meant to be looking after the kids, and it's just like <laughs> they oh just don't goodness. give a shit. I didn't care about any of the characters either, to be honest. I just I, There wasn't completely <laughs> a lack of character depth, but, yeah, I just didn't care about any of these. I was honestly waiting for them all to die, and I was disappointed when, like, there was, like, <laughs> the body count in this movie. The body count in this movie is so low. I was, like, I was disappointed. It's incredibly low. <laughs> And, and, and you know, you, you compare it to fucking um, Asylum, and, and I was gonna say Trauma, and those movies have pretty decent body counts. And this thing has like fucking, I can kind of count the bodies on one hand of the people who died in this movie. Yeah. What did you guys think of the special effects? <laughs> I, I liked it. I, I thought you know, a lot of that shit where, where it's not CG. In most cases, it might look kind of stiff, but you get a sense of that's kind of there because the shadow, everything looks right about the physical prints. It even has a weight to it. <laughs> but when you, you know, I, I enjoyed the shit. Even a big giant one that that came out of Carlton. 
<laughs> fucking shit that kind of look like if you remember when he was attacking the fucking Mexican guy the Mexican was like no 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 stop no but he was really kind of holding the thing by its head and moving it for him like, like <laughs> oh yes oh, stop. you're moving it you're manipulating it sir stop it. there's there's definitely there's definitely yes, as you're saying this is not a CGI movie so it's all done with oh. puppetry and with um uh, you, you know, and, and, and so forth. So, um, it's, uh, yeah, but it's, I still think they're not bad. I mean, the giant ticks in this are actually, I think they're actually pretty well done for 1993. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's quite yeah. a bit of blood and gashes and, you know, and, uh, and so forth. And I, and I think they're actually pretty well done for the time to be truthful. Yeah. yeah it's he, actually pretty even too. The two yeah. creeps, the two uh, the creepy guys. One's like a pedophile. The other one's like a straight. Uh, he spoke weird, fucking highly proper English. Who was always combing his hair. Those two weren't that bad. And I thought they were pretty good, convincing kind of. Yeah, we're, we're we we grow weed, you guys. We're gonna fucking shoot you. When when the thing is, I'm pretty sure a lot. I'm from Northern California, and I know plenty of people who grow weed, and they're all friendly. You guys ever been to a grow room? It's one of the most happiest. The plants seem like they're alive and they're also <laughs> hello. There's, there's no sense of, all right, yeah, we're going to fucking kill these guys and we're going to grow this weed with steroids. It's, so it's a fantastic <laughs> hyper, hyper fucking generalization of the fucking uh, weed character. It was, it was fucking great. Oh, it, it definitely, yeah. yeah, it definitely, it definitely does. I mean, the our two baddies in this, the the dope growers, are definitely sort of like you know portrayed that. I mean, they do want they they do sort of portray it in a sense that yeah, if you do this for a living, you're bad. Um, yeah, is, is definitely yeah. the way it's portrayed. Although the doctor is a really interesting character because the doctor's a totally nice, good person. Just a sorry, not a doctor, a vet, I should say, the vet mm-hmm. um, who's in this movie, and um, you know, and she's quite at home. She's got no problems at all with them, you know, growing dope. It doesn't doesn't worry her, you know, sort of <sighs> in the slightest. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, definitely, there's that almost that old. What was it, Nancy Reagan? Reefer thing? Madness. Just say it no, the, you know? This had the Reefer <laughs> Madness kind of feel to it when it was, it was hammering the drugs on it. Like, oh, I yeah, it's like, see, you grow, if you grow guy. weed, the tick population is going to grow to monstrous sizes and get out of control. <laughs> there, was, there, was, there was almost an anti drug thing, like you're saying, because they had yeah. the, uh, the steroids. He's like, yeah, I'm going to take these steroids. And, and look at Carlos trying to show off his girl looking steroids. And they mentioned steroids every other scene. And That's the next thing right. You know, steroids make fucking Carlton the super goddamn tick. I'm like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Holy hell. That was my favorite part, actually, was when you see fucking Carlton turn into a giant tick. I mean, like, it basically cocoons his body and, is like, just splits out of his body and this giant tick comes out. I like that part. My second favorite part was fucking Clint Howard with his face just getting ready to explode with fucking ticks popping out and he's just yes. like, I'm infested! <laughs> I like, <laughs> just like... It is an entertaining movie, but yeah. once was enough for me. But, but, the, the, but the, whole, the whole idea of the timeline, I mean, I, I love the way that he's, he's popping these, these steroids and then <laughs> literally within, what, five minutes, taking the steroids <laughs> has been able to grow a super tick. So the entire bio- biology Great of steroids. the species, <laughs> the entire biology of this species has been altered within five minutes. Yeah. You know? It's amazing steroids. Holy <laughs> shit. And great weed, apparently. <laughs> um, oh, you know, my goodness. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, the, the idea of you know natural selection and, and biology wasn't really strong, I have to admit, you know, in, <laughs> um, in but, this but movie. But now to, to defend the movie and to defend... Um, if you notice what they did to Carlton when they had him strung out on steroids, it, they, they did a really gradual mental slip where he started becoming unstable. Because the roid rage was kicking in. Yeah, you can attribute him as being a shitty actor, but I say he was he was trying to portray the the real life pains and withdrawals of fucking taking drugs and and, and you know showing a real world the attitude. To, yeah, this is my character. You know, like real real method acting shit, like how Heath Ledger did Joker. Oh so, god, uh, no. I, I, I'd like to think that Carlton got got down. He said, "I said, yeah, you know, what what does a guy from the hood do?" When faced with this rough situation, how do I get myself? You know, I'm not a give. You notice he never gave up, even when they were shooting him. Those two bad guys. Yep. He's like, I'm just trying to go home now, and he fought back. Yeah. So he he was always that. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm this guy from the streets, and I'm not going to give up. I'm telling you, man, the acting was sharp on for Carlton. The the only it's the, <laughs> the only thing though I, I've got to say is there are some funny bits about it all. Like, I mean, for instance. 
when he decides after his dog is attacked by a tick and he gets very <laughs> upset and he decides Aww. and he decides that he's going to leave the camp and go back to Los Angeles or Toronto. Uh, but anyway, Los <laughs> Angeles. And, um, and, and so, and so, so he leaves in the middle of the night and he's walking right. But what does he do? He walks cross country. There's a road. There's an actual oh, road, but he doesn't. He doesn't God. walk down the road. No, instead he climbs over the mountains and through the the valleys and over the rocks. Why didn't he just follow the road? <laughs> you don't get it because that's that's act. That's again, that's acting because because I'm gonna do things a hard way. <laughs> There's no easy way about this, and the roads would be for the man. I don't do what the oh, man says. My God, <laughs> See? No. He's rebellious. <laughs> oh no, this movie. Mm-mm. Once uh, is enough for me, guys. Once yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but even before they know that there are the giant ticks, and when he when they realise that he's left the camp, and one of the comments is that it, what do they say? Oh, if he can survive on the streets of Los Angeles, he can survive <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. woods. And it's a little bit oh like what is it? What is I there couldn't... similar about the woods and the streets of Los Angeles? You know, oh um, my goodness, that made, me, that made me cringe so hard because it, it was almost like a shitty version. Of, of of trying to build the character up in this fucking super tough guy, like yeah, you know he can survive the streets. Yes. <laughs> it was like, ah, oh, stop it! I get it, I get it. He's in the street. Stop selling oh, me that. They God. really, they really did oversell that whole point. I mean, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. The intro. The first thing he says when you see him is, "Hey, what's up, ho? We gonna play a game?" Ugh. Yeah, he was so happy to do that role, I can tell, because, you know, yeah. pretty much all he's known is for playing the nice guy in this movie. He gets to be a, a gangbanging thug or a wannabe gangbanging thug. I think he was just full of shit, to be honest. I don't think he was actually, like, mean and from the streets, but he was just trying to keep up that image around all these people. So oh, I don't know. Definitely. That's, that's, I think he was full of inner turmoil and, you know, and, and just <laughs> yeah, he was a harsh life on the street and having to come to the, the everyday world trying to be against me and the whole, you know, and the man holding me down and now I'm, I'm going to be... Oh. Oh God! Trying to fight no. me. I'm still surviving. <laughs> I'm still living. You know, I, that's that's a hardcore character, man. Badass. Oh right there. my goodness gracious! Oh, <laughs> but but you are right about the idea that the um uh because of course the idea is that you know ticks like leeches have a um an anesthetic um that they actually yeah. use obviously when they bite um mm. because obviously if they really hurt when they bit of course animals wouldn't accept you know um so anyway we're not having a biology lesson here but the whole idea <laughs> is meant to be because these are super ticks um it, yeah. it's like when they bite you it's like being on an LSD trip like on an acid trip yeah they trip. get you hard um, yep. and but 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 yeah but some of their um uh, shall we say the filming of some of the trips were absolutely hilarious? Um, yes, they were. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they were. Um, uh, because we actually get to see what the actors meant to be seen or what the characters meant to be seen when they're on their trip. And that, I've got to admit, that is just, that, that is hilarious. You know, that, that, that really is. <laughs> Um, but what, what did everybody think about, you know, the, um, the big sort of climactic battle between bug versus human when they're, they're trapped in, in the house. But what I loved about it is that at one stage, the van gets driven through the side of the wall, right? But the ticks are still not coming in the house. You know, it's like somehow there's a, there's a huge, you know, like four meter square hole in the side of the house now. Oh my god! But the ticks still haven't realized. <laughs> oh know? my god! No, I liked whenever there was fire present. Like the, anytime they burned a tick, it would explode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, so I like how, like, of course they blew up, blew up the giant tick, which blew up the house at the end. And I'm just like, that's what I was waiting for. I was waiting for the explosion. You, Thank you. you I'm know, satisfied one, now. Yes. One thing that made me pause in that whole thing and escape was when they were doing it and they're getting ready they're getting ready to go to the van and the, the Mexican guy and fucking <laughs> Seth Green are talking and the Mexican guy's like no I got it and then Seth Green goes no I need to do it because I'm having a panic attack and I need yeah. to get out of here and then I, I'm, and I'm thinking here logically you know if I was in this situation do I want the athletic looking guy who, who's still mentally in his wits or do I want the skinny kind of guy having a fucking panic attack to go out there 
<laughs> I know. What the fuck is going on? I know. No, I don't, but, just, <laughs> but doesn't one of them at one stage where he actually says, what, do I look Mexican? And one of the others actually says, uh, yes, you do, yeah. actually. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, but, a little but, bit of comedic racism. I know, I know. Love but it, it's yeah. but but you're so right. It's like you know, if you need somebody to save the day, do you really want the mentally disturbed one who just wants to get out, or do you want to send someone who's in control with their faculties? It's oh my God. you know, um, fucking get Carlos to do it. Fucking yeah. Jesus, he can probably steal the car easier. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh. Oh dearie me! It's um, look, it, it's still for all its little faults and all the rest of it. I really do love this movie because it is just so much fun. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's a real fun one. Um, it is and, a fun movie. You know, and and sometimes some creature features can get they they look too inwards, like they get too serious and they lose you know a lot of that yeah. fun. Some sometimes right. they get. I mean, I, I think pretentious. It, yeah, um, I mean, I've always, I never ever liked the the remake of Piranha, you know, Piranha 3D. Mm. Because I I just thought, Mm -hmm. even though it had lots of comedy in it, lots of dark humour and stuff, it just, it turned into just a gore fest and it just lost the whole idea about what Piranha movies are sort of meant to be about. Yeah. You know, do do you sort of, and I think that's what I loved about Tits, because it doesn't do that, you know? Mm -mm. You know, um, yeah, I'm, I've never been a fan of that Piranha 3D. I thought that was shit. That was, just, that was terrible. Well, well, yeah, well that should be a good inclination. The movie had 3D in the title. Usually when it says 3D, you know it's going to be some garbage because it's going to be excuses yeah. to fucking put a dumb camera angle on it. Like, yeah. oh, it's just coming at you. Like, oh. like, oh, I'm swinging a stick for no reason. Look, 3D. Whoa. Yeah. Ooh, it's in your face. Like, There's the fishes. <laughs> You're swimming it's in your face. Yeah. In oh, your God, face. In your- oh. I, I in wish, your but face. I, I mean, I wish they'd stop doing that. I, I hate the way Hollywood... Is trying to make uh, trying to make B grade movies and then release them as dark comedies as mainstream cinema, and and I mm. just I just don't think it works. I mean, some of them sort of have, mm-hmm. but the ones they've been doing lately are just terrible. I mean, when when they made the sequel to Piranha Three D, what was it, Piranha Double D? Um, <laughs> What a name. I forgot about that. They, yeah, they, I forgot about that. But that that movie is good because it works. Because it actually they went back to what a movie like that is meant to be about, um, and, and and it's it's the same as Tix. Tix is like that. It's it's it follows the genre that everybody likes. Who likes these sorts of creature feature movies? You know, um, Anaconda is maybe one that did work, but it, it'd be one of the very few ones I can think of. I you thought know? this reminded me of Arachnophobia with John Goodman, kind of like yeah, that kind of. I actually really yeah. like that movie. I actually well, really like that movie. I've watched a, it in ages, but, but I actually see, really like that one. But that's another one that does work. You know, it's like where they take a, a crappy B grade concept and turn it into a regular mainstream film, and that did actually work. Um, and the same as Anaconda sort of worked, but right. so many of the other ones are just. I wish they'd stop doing it. You know, I really do. <laughs> I just I got a beam my bonnet about it. I hate it. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm at the stage. I'm going to write somebody a letter. You know, it's just it's it's really bad. <laughs> uh oh, he's going to rant. Yes, no, but, uh, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, no. This movie was fun. It was lighthearted. It didn't take itself too seriously. I did actually like in this one that they did have a little bit of character depth. Like they tried to give you a little bit of insight. Although even though that if, that effort sometimes fell kind of flat, like the one young girl who doesn't speak, then all of a sudden she speaks, and she's kind of like, <sighs> well, Jesus. ever since I got mm. raped. I didn't want to talk. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, damn. Ooh. Okay, well, now I now I care about this character because now I feel sorry for her. <laughs> like, I, I like oh, how she was funny. a fishing phenom, too. Like, all of a sudden, she has a fishing hat, and she's great at fishing. <laughs> and she can, oh, no. She's, she's, oh, my God, fishing expert. Who knew? <laughs> Which, of course, came in handy later in the movie. Yeah, of How course. convenient. <laughs> yes, it's... Uh, no, but look, I, I, I definitely... Look, I loved Tits, and I would recommend anyone who likes creature features... You know, to go out and and hunt it down. Obviously, from 1993, you know, there's no CGI. We're talking about puppeteering and and, and so forth. Mm-hmm. But it's but they're it's, pretty good. It's really good. Oh right, yeah, yeah. The I, effects I are pretty right. good. The effects are pretty good for the time. Yeah. It's, I mean, of course, you have to suspend your disbelief. Obviously, they're not really giant ticks. But no, oh, it really actually looks velvet. Pretty good. I, I never would have gathered. <laughs> 
No, I never really? Would agree. Are you, are you really? sure? I mean, I thought, they, I thought they flew them in from like South America. Come on. You got to tell people this now. You, 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 you know, you can't can't assume everybody's as smart as we are. Yeah, you, you, you know, mean, people are stupid. You, you, you're right. I, I remember seeing. I, I saw that. What was that movie? I saw Narnia in the theater, and, and then I, the person behind me. It was a grown man. He was talking to his fucking kid, and I felt sorry for the kid because he, he fed the kid some dumb information. He said, hey, you know what? That's a real lion. Those are all real animals right there. They flew them in. They have trainers backstage. Oh, what the my God. God. You about? Idiot. You wow. Blizzard. Wow. Yeah. People are Just stupid. Just wow. <laughs> so, yes. There's a lion. They trained them. There's a real ticks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, oh. it, it's like, you know, like Jurassic, Jurassic World. Oh, what do you mean? I thought yeah. it was a documentary. You mean it was a movie? Uh, what? You mean, oh, right. there, you, mean, you, mean, you mean there really yeah. isn't an island I can fly to and go and see the dinosaurs? What, really? Oh, you guys ever seen How disappointing. Of, you guys ever see a picture from, uh, from uh, I think it was from the filming, and they have, like, fucking Steven Spielberg, and he's sitting in front of, like, a fucking uh, a dead triceratops from the movie or some shit, and he posted it online. Yep, yep. And the majority of people thought, like, how dare you kill that exotic animal? You yep. have no oh, right I remember to that. life. Yeah. Yep, I watched. Yep, How did I remember I that. that? Wow, yep, it was it was it was wow. a, it was a meme made up with um wow. d- done totally as a piss take, and then it went viral. And yes, oh the whole idea that God. Steven Spielberg was hunting Triceratops, <laughs> and people <laughs> are so stupid, idiots. Yeah, they were they were out there. How dare Steven Spielberg be hunting these magnificent animals? And um, <laughs> hashtag no yeah. hunting. Yeah. Hashtag stop killing stuff. <laughs> you know, I mean, I it's can't. yeah, it's it yeah, oh, wow. it's it's it, it's un it's just it's unbelievable. You know, hey, what? Stephen, wildlife should live. You yeah. get it, wildlife. Ugh. Wow. Yeah. Just wow. But then again, well, I they mean, have good intentions. They have a uh, good intentions. <laughs> oh, their hearts in the right place. But you think about brain. it. I mean, <laughs> even professional victims. <laughs> even ah. even today, though, there are people. <gasps> Who still send messages, and write letters to TV stations or emails these days, uh, and and so forth, because they are watching a soap opera and they believe oh, what oh. they're watching is real. Like, how oh dare so and so be treated God. that way? Or you know, why why aren't you, <gasps> like what what why isn't there a why aren't you get, when is the TV station going to have a funeral for whoever because oh, their character no. was doing right? <laughs> Yeah, Dallas. Um, <laughs> oh, stop. You know, wow. so it's it's amazing. Just, the, just wow. the people are just so wow. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. no ticks were harmed in the making of this movie. <laughs> no, they don't grow that big. They don't grow that big. There, there is no steroid marijuana that will grow you no. to monstrous no. sizes. No. <laughs> Please so, don't looking. <laughs> so anyway, no, look, definitely. I give ticks a thumb, uh, ticks a thumbs up. I absolutely loved it, but I love all these sorts of movies. So, um, <laughs> so everybody else, thumbs up or yeah, thumbs down? I, thumb, thumb I'll up. say watch oh. it one time, and you know, if you like creature features, you definitely want to watch this one. So, I'll give it a thumbs up. And Town Kenny, definitely a thumbs up from you. All, all the way up from childhood to now being grown man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful movie. I love it. Perfect. It's fun. You can't have more funny. You can't have this movie, man. It's great. Yeah, this I agree. This is a great one, I reckon, on a Sunday afternoon. Pour yourself a mm-hmm. drink. Sit back in your favorite chair and just, just have fun. And it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. All right. We want to break and we'll be back with movie number three. And I worked in the garden center, and a lady came in, and we had the flowers, and they were in the plants, and she asked me how much the chlamydia's were. <laughs> the Only Funny Does podcast, available now at OnlyFunnyDoes.com. Now, our third movie, oh, and we've <laughs> kept the best for last. <laughs> well, in my, in my humble opinion, anyway. And that Love is it. from 2001, Jason yes. X. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Directed by James Isaac. Now, this is is brilliant. And if you if people haven't seen this, it's basically the 10th installment, if you like, of the Friday the 13th Jason uh, franchise. And um, it is absolutely fantastic. And the reason mm-hmm. why I love it so much is 
is it's cross genre. And I love cross genre films, whether they be, you know, horror with war, sci uh, and in this case, sci fi with horror. And it's just absolutely brilliant. Um, what did you guys think? I actually saw this movie in the theater. So, again, it has that nostalgia factor for me. I remember being in the theater and being totally excited to see this movie. Also, I absolutely love, 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 love the Friday the 13th and the whole – I love that whole genre. I love this whole series. And I was happy I was able to bring a friend with me because so many people are like, they're still making that movie? This is part 10? Is this, shouldn't he be dead yet? And I just love that this movie basically is making fun of itself, but at the same time, it's a really good and entertaining like story. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's look, it's fantastic. I mean, just to give people a, a rough idea of the storyline before we sort of um, dissect it piece by piece. Oh, do you like that? Dissecting? <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, dissected, dissected with a machete. Oh, um, but, um, <laughs> uh, so anyway, from 2001, uh, as we said, so it's part 10. So, of course, taking the name Jason X, if anyone, you know, understands, you know, Latin. Uh, but anyway, and um, the uh, it's set in 2010. So obviously a little bit in the future, but back a bit for us, where Jason uh, Voorhees is finally captured um, and he, they've tried to, you know, kill him so many different times. He keeps coming back to life. So they decide that they're going to cryologically freeze him. This is the only way to do it. Well, of course, we've got some bad guys, you know, some guys who think that they can use him, you know, for money and power, and they want to take control, yeah. and it all goes to shit. Um, lots of people get uh, killed, and then... The um, our main character uh, basically managed to, to uh, lock Jason into the freezer, but she unfortunately gets stabbed at the same time, so she gets frozen as well. It then crosses into the future to 2,455, where oh, they are found by some humans on a an expedition going back <laughs> to Earth because Earth is no longer inhabitable basically we've just totally destroyed the planet and we now live on another planet called earth 2 but anyway they've come back and they really? find <laughs> they they find um they find jason and uh they find our lead actress uh who's uh was it let's uh is it Diog? Diog, i think is that how she pronounces her name um uh, it is yeah, i'm not sure how she pronounce either I'm not. Uh, I'd I think say it's Doig, Doig, but I just called it dog. <laughs> dog. <laughs> I hate dog. <laughs> and None of us um, know how to pronounce um, it. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, they find them. They uh, bring them back to the spaceship, and they reanimate them. And of course, the problem is, of course, that Jason comes back to life, and we pretty much know what's going to happen from here on. He's going to try to hunt them all down on the spaceship, and of course, they've got to try to survive. But that's what I loved about it because it's Jason in space. It was just such a cool <laughs> idea. Yeah. Um, you know um, what? I mean, what what does everyone think? Oh man, this movie I love. I saw it in the theater. I have the shit on DVD. <laughs> and, and for me, Jason's a little special because I never, since I was a kid, I never saw him as a monster bad guy because he had two things which made him a hero to me. He had a cool fucking mask. And he always had cool weapons on him and shit. <laughs> so to my fucking mind, since I was a kid, like, oh, man, this guy's a fucking hero. He's like Storm Shadow and all my fucking favorite guys with masks and weapons. So I looked at him <laughs> like that. So, so fast forward, and I see this movie, man. I'm seeing him kick all this ass. Then he turns into fucking a, a robot, goddamn Jason. It was fucking <laughs> awesome. And the fact that I think this movie had the highest amount of Jason kills for that uh, up to that point, I think it was. Yes. Yes, right. even on 28 the, kills. 28 it, confirmed yeah, kills yeah. in this movie. Yeah. And even on the DVD itself, it has my favorite feature, which I don't even watch the movie no more, really. I only watched it recently for the story. Normally, I watch it like this. There's a feature on the movie called Kills Only. And it just <laughs> plays the movie with only kills, nothing else. And it's fucking... I, 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 it's like a brand new thing to me every time. And I, I 
I hope it's on Blu-ray so I can upgrade my DVD, and I hope that feature is still there, man, because just the creative kills are there. And then when you, like you said, it's a crossover. So when you put that sitting in the future, you open Jason up to doing all kinds of new creative shit with tools he hasn't mm-hmm. used before. He's yes. putting people on rotating giant fucking space hooks from aliens and shit. He's <laughs> fucking decapitating Stone Cold Steve Austin while he's playing a video game and killing him in real life. <laughs> and Carrot Top. Yep. You know, he, he, he's, he's, he's fucking up old man Anderson Silva at the end and they fall to the goddamn ground. It's fucking amazing, man. Yeah, and he had, had the sleeping it. bag kill. I mean, Jesus. I don't oh, know. Oh, the theater, yes. yeah. and for every kill, the theater loved it. I went to the theater and, and it was pretty much packed for it. And the the kills that made everybody fucking go oh shit and ooh and and just cheer <laughs> was the slow neck breaking when that when that bitch got her neck broken really slow and you heard that fucking that broken oh. noise like and he did it real slow. The crowd loved it. it was like ooh, oh. you heard that. <laughs> and then the fucking sleeping bag kill for sure made people nuts, just laughing every way. Because I, I don't know how it was when you saw it in the theater. When I saw it, everyone was fucking just laughing and really having a good time. No one was scared. It oh, was man. Fucking, yeah. Just that. Unfortunately, so I, I didn't get to see like a midnight premiere. It sounds like for what you went to was like a really active theater. Unfortunately, when I saw it, there weren't that many people in the theater. I think it was actually a daytime showing on top of it. So mm. unfortunately, we didn't have that level of enthusiasm, but that's how I felt when I was watching the movie. So uh, if you're a fan of this movie, if you're a fan of this genre, you probably like this. But this film also divided a lot of the horror community. A lot of people yeah, don't yeah. like that this movie takes place in space. They don't like that there are sci-fi elements. They don't They're like important. that Jason gets an upgrade in this movie so but i he love awesome I, though look oh, at him i, I mean, loved Jesus. it i loved it his mask is yeah. so yeah. fucking cool i honestly and love the whole yes i love the whole android fight so for me when i was in the theater this is one of those times they got me i'm not gonna lie so this is 2001 i'm 21 i'm watching this movie in the theater and honestly i thought this was probably gonna be like the last movie and actually it kind of was because now they've rebooted it and they did a freddy versus jason but i'm so at the time when I saw this, I thought if he dies in this movie, he's probably going to stay dead. So when they have the scene in the movie where he's actually fighting a fucking android and she's got the BFG, the big fucking gun, she blows his fucking arm off. She blows his fucking leg off. She blows a fucking huge hole in his chest. And then she blows off three fourths of his fucking head. And I'm like, OK, he's he's done. This movie's <laughs> over. Yeah. Like he's, he's I, they literally go got me they got me i was like oh jason's dead they're done this movie's done and so then i thought okay now it's going to turn into this whole sci-fi movie because the ship's all fucked up and leaking gas or diesel or whatever the fuck space fuel they use (laughs) and they gotta they gotta get off the fucking space petroleum right Diesel. They gotta get off the. They Space gotta get diesel. off the fucking. They gotta get off the fucking ship. So I thought that's how the movie was going to end. But oh, was I wrong? That movie was just getting fucking started. Because what happened? Fucking blown up Jason, missing the fucking leg, missing the fucking arm, three fourths of his head gone, big ass hole in his chest. What happens? He landed on a sick bay bed, and it's automatic. And all the fucking nanobots come out, and they reconstruct what's missing. So now we got fucking cyber Jason. Yes, motherfucker, we got a cyborg serial killer on board, and you're all gonna die. <laughs> oh, he was all awesome. He was so awesome looking when you first saw this motherfucker. He's bleeding. Yes. He got his fucking machete out, and the, even the machete got fucking upgraded. Like, holy, that was like, <laughs> yeah. amazing. They I know. This fucking knife. Wow. It's it, it is interesting that when when this came out, it was um, the whole idea of you know Freddy versus Jason was on the drawing board, but it still was mm-hmm. a, a bit off yet. And the whole right. reason why Jason Etz was actually made was that they needed a filler film. This this movie was only actually really meant to be a filler oh, no. to actually keep the audience uh, engaged, so they didn't lose track of the actual franchise. But the, mm-hmm. the, but the thing is that what I love about it is that for me it's actually my favourite of them all. Um, me too. You know, me too. Uh, yeah. even though it was never really designed to be that. Um, but for me, it was like when I first saw it, I sort of thought, "Oh, this is just perfect." You know, two of my favourite right. genres thrown together in the one movie. This is just brilliant. <laughs> you, you know, and 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 for Jason, I thought. For me, that was the last movie where Jason looked and moved like because that was Kane Hodder's last film. Mm-hmm. That's and right. then when you go to mm-hmm. Freddy versus Jason, he's this fucking tall, gumpy, just mm-hmm. stick a 
just who the hell is this guy in a hockey mask? It didn't, it didn't look right to me. But then mm-hmm. you have him in. You know, his movements are precise in fucking Jason X. His head turns first. And his body, he's mm-hmm. like a fucking human shark. You go to mm-hmm. Freddy versus Jason, it's this tall, gumpy, awkward fuck. And at scene, <laughs> he looks like he's fucking trying to run. So to me, mm-hmm. this was this was the last portrayal of what the fucker should move like. Like, like a straight right. human yeah. shark. The the right. other the other really interesting thing about this is that of course it was it came out obviously made in two thousand and one it came out at the same time where there was another TV series um, on television called Andromeda uh, which mm-hmm. which starred um, let's uh, well we will just call her uh, hey, is this the one with this is the one is this the one with fucking Hercules in there yeah Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Sorbo <laughs> yeah that's it um, I know this show but yeah. it, it but it starred it starred let's uh, um, uh, Doig and uh, it also starred uh, Lisa Ryder who plays the android in this. But the big joke, and you can sort of see it a little bit in this film, because of course the film was filmed while I was still shooting Andromeda. And, um, uh, but in Andromeda, their roles are reverse. Uh, Letza is actually the uh, android in the TV show, and Lisa is the human. So they actually revo- uh, sort of reverse the roles. And so that's, that's actually really kind of interesting to watch, uh, because of course they were, uh, the TV show was on television when this movie was playing in the cinema. So for a lot of fans of Andromeda, they went to watch this and they sort of went, oh, wow, you know, like they really <laughs> got it. And they loved the way that the two characters reversed their roles from the TV show because they could have done it the other way around. Right, totally. No, you that's know? cool. Um, that's cool. But uh, but I have to admit, um, I will watch anything that has Letzer in it. I, I just think she's one of the most beautiful actresses to ever come out of Canada. Um, nice. You know, yeah, Canada was basically made just to support her as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> she's absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. But but she's actually married to, uh, what's his name? Um, Michael Shanks, who, of course, is the star of Stargate that we were talking about mm. just before. Um, oh, how funny. And uh, she actually went on to play the role of the Doctor in Stargate. So she's actually got quite a science fiction sort of tradition you know, as well. So it's, uh, yeah, no. Oh, God. I just love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> totally love this. Um, I like the kills in this movie, too. Um, this was actually the first time that the Friday the 13th franchise actually used uh, digital effects because everything had always hmm. been practical effects. You know, you had Tom Savini creating all the dummies and the fake blood. And in this was the first time that they actually used uh, computer-aided uh, CGI to make the kills in any of the Friday the Thirteenth movies, and this movie also has my favorite Friday the Thirteenth kill of all time: the liquid hydrogen frozen face <laughs> head smash. Love it, love it, yeah. love it. Poor scientist, what a way to go! At least it was quick. You know what I mean? It, they it closed up on two, didn't they? They oh, fucking oh totally. yeah, sure. yeah. yeah nice. It's like. They, they're just, just this vat of liquid nitrogen instantly freezes anything that touches it within like two seconds and he grabs Man. her by the back of the head he pushes her face in and they even throw show the camera from like you know <laughs> underneath in the liquid you can see her screaming and you think she's going to drown but then like within two seconds her her scream is silenced her face is frozen he pulls her out her face is a fucking ice cube he slams it on the counter and it just shatters blood brain bones skull all fucking ice cubed so yeah it's brilliant, but best, you would, best, but best you would have to ask. I like how he was smart enough to know what it is, too. He knew what the fuck. <laughs> well, he I think he was. thought he was going to drown her. I think he but, thought he was going to drown her. But, I think but, he thought it was liquid. But who in, their, <laughs> who in their right mind on a spaceship has a bath of open, like an open sink of liquid, <laughs> n- liquid nitrogen? <laughs> Huh. You know, must I be mean, a new safety code. <laughs> Different union must be working it. I mean, it'd be, it'd be too bad if one of the um, if one of the people on the spaceship just had a walked up and sort of said, "Oh, I better wash my hands now." Oh my god! You know? Oh god! Well, oh, I mean, that would be think terrible. about though. They, on the spaceship, they can go to those dumb nanobots and they can rebuild them a brand new arm. So I don't think they carry oh, that that's much. That's true. Yeah, and I like are. how they I like how they did that in this movie. How they showcased all this future technology because this movie's supposed to be taking place in you know uh, two thousand four hundred AD essentially. And I like how they did that. They showed you that they had um, nanobots that can reconstruct you know body tissue, and you know you can get a new arm and a new leg in like a, in half an hour, if even that. And then like I like how they showed they had their whole virtual reality, so they made use of that. And of course they're in space, so they have space travel. Like I, they showed 
showed all this cool technology that they had to build. They even showed like the liquid nitrogen, so you knew what it was before she got killed. Like she was uh, basically doing an autopsy on who she thought was a dead Jason Voorhees, and she took takes one of his rotten eyeballs and she freezes it in the liquid nitrogen to preserve it for you know historical purposes, of course. And <laughs> oh, no. I'm not a fucking dummy. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's, but, but I think that's the other thing too about it is that it still plays, even though it's in space, it still plays with all of the original Jason concepts. So yeah, all of yeah. the the younger cast in the movie are all meant to be basically university students. Um, mm-hmm. you, you've then got the, the you know the, the the baddies who want to make use of you know uh, of this. Um, you, and then you've got you know like the army bit as well for the sci fi thing, which you know, taps into Alien and all of that. Um, And then, of course, you've got the running around the spaceship, which is just like Alien as well. Um, Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got all that stuff in it. But the other thing, too, I don't know if you guys noticed, is that the spaceship is painted yellow. I don't know if you guys noticed (laughs) that. And it's done intentionally (laughs) so it looks like a school bus. (laughs) <laughs> oh, jeez. Because they're on a field trip yeah, to Earth on. 2. Yeah. I mean, yeah. me, Earth 1, and that's where they discover the cryogenically frozen Jason. And <laughs> I love this movie. It's just, I, okay, I love it when they try to trick him with virtual reality to distract him for a moment while they're trying to get away. And so they make it look like fucking uh, Camp Crystal Lake. And he comes across two women, and they're like, hey, want to have premarital sex? And then they're smoking pot. I and know. Then, like, for, then they take yeah. off their shirt and show their boobs, and then they climb inside sleeping bags, and then it like cuts to him like slamming the sleeping bag <laughs> against the tree a tree as a nod thing. to the original you know, know. series. <laughs> yes, it, was, it is. It is great when they load they load their virtual reality program to try to slow Jason down, and it's like you know loading cold um you know loading scenario nineteen eighty. And it's just great. It's just the way they they pay homage to it, which was so cool. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, uh, you know, even though, and and that's the other thing too. And I don't, uh, if, if I really should say, because it's the very ending of this movie. But um, I, you know, this movie came out in two thousand one. I hell. think they can kind of yeah go go for okay. it. Okay, is that I, I love it. the fact that um, obviously Jason falls back to. Well, what is now Earth Two rather than Earth One, <laughs> but he lands. At another camping ground lake, and and, we, and you know, and, and we and we have two young a young couple there, sort of. Oh, what was that? Oh, it just fell in the lake. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, and, and I just <laughs> and I love that. You know, that, that that's where the comic book comes in because they did a comic book where after that happens, he comes to Earth. He he kills fucking Anderson Silva over there. And, he, and, and I guess and some company fucking clones another version of Jason that's like the old school Jason, and he has to fucking fight the other old school Jason. It's it's very very comic bookish, and I think I would have made a fucking kind of more or less. Oh, nothing you would movie. recommend. Okay, I was I mean, kind of curious fun. about that. I, I like the art. Art was great, and it's a concept of Jason. I don't like Jason fighting himself. He should fight. He should just kill people. Mm, stop. Stop. I feel you. Fight. Yeah. Kill people. Okay, I feel you. So some people wonder about the timeline of this movie. So obviously this movie takes place in the future. So this movie is supposed to be taking place after Jason has already fought Freddy. So for those of you kind of going, well, didn't he fight Freddy Krueger? When did that happen? Yes, that was in the past. This movie's oh, in the future. Cool. So this movie is happening after Jason has already well, fought Freddy. <laughs> I, I, I think I think that's, <laughs> that's, that's yeah. Jason. That's, Terrible that's, movie. <laughs> I think that's the reason why this movie is when it starts – it's not set in 2001. It starts with the setting of 2010. And, right, and, and that right. was And that was, from what I can gather, intentionally done because they knew that they were going to have other movies to follow. So they had right. to – the idea is they had to try to throw it ahead of what they were going to make. So, mm-hmm. um, so a bit like, you know, like um, – yeah, it's not like um, – you know, everyone that loves, like, for instance, we've got the Alien movies, and and then, of course, which leads on to Prometheus, and then, of course, we've got the uh, Predator movies, and, of course, the problem is when you've got Alien versus Predator, it doesn't make any friggin' sense, because Mm-mm. once you see Prometheus, it just throws the whole concept, you know, on its head. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but the beauty about Jason X is it doesn't destroy the timeline the way right. that the Alien versus Predator movies do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I like. I really like. I think this is actually really clever writing. Like I said, this is one of those movies either you hate it or you like it. And like I said, this divided so many people because they were just like they, they can't get past the concept. They don't get 
give it a chance because they're like, he's in space. Oh, that's stupid. Like they don't, they won't even give it a chance because I'm just like, no, no, but you have to see how he ends up in space. It's totally awesome. And I love the whole thing where basically they finally like basically arrested Jason and they've tried executing him. They've tried hanging him. They've tried firing squad. They've tried injections. They've tried <laughs> the electric yes. chair. He keeps coming back. So they're like, fuck it. We're just going to like hang him on hooks and have somebody watch him 24 seven. And we're going right. to cryogenically freeze the fucker. That, that's that's how we're going to take care of him until we fucking figure it out. And of course, right when they're getting ready to cryogenically freeze him, fucking David Cronenberg makes a cameo yep. as the fucking power hungry, you know, government official who's like, no, we're going to study him and we're going to learn about his regenerative properties so that we can use that for our soldiers. And of course, that's when Jason Just gets loose and kills fucking... all those motherfuckers. And that's when there's a cryogenic freeze leak and his ass gets frozen. And then hundreds of years later, like 500 years later, here comes um, the space students <laughs> yeah, <laughs> space <field> teams <laughs> to come come pick them up and they think oh wow this is a 500 year old uh, frozen human well he's obviously in bad shape and we won't be able to bring him back to life but we can study his body well they don't know they're fucking with Jason Voorhees and once he falls out he's going to be in prime shape again so <laughs> <laughs> but the, but the other, the other thing though I really loved is that unlike so many of these movies, you know, where they're set in the future oh, and sh- you know they always they put people in you know like um, a uniform or like you know like mm-hmm. that, that especially that old seventies idea or sixties idea where everybody yeah. wears the same clothes. What I loved about mm-hmm. this is that they're in space on a spaceship, but they're just in everyday clothes or what yeah. they're viewing are yeah. everyday clothes for the future. And I I sort of really liked that. I thought that was you know really kind of cool the way they did that was it it kept that teenager feeling going um yeah. even though they were in space <laughs> you know did, did you notice though that they kind of dress like the fucking jetsons like almost fucking <laughs> yes they do a bit look for look. very jetson look like wow look, Roy's fucking classmates oh oh okay okay this this did you guys notice okay of course there's a couple on there's a teenage couple on the spaceship and, and while jason's thawing out right when they start having sex is when he wakes up did you guys catch that yep. yeah <laughs> yeah he's like oh teenagers having sex gotta go kill yep like- <laughs> yep i know no you're spot on you're absolutely spot on um, <laughs> there's there's just there's there's so much i love about this i mean i just i can't fault it it just you know to me it just ticks every box um mm-hmm. you know it's just it, it just Oh, no, I just, I, I absolutely, absolutely adore it. It's definitely mm-hmm. one I recommend to anyone. Yeah, right. Even if you're not even into the Jason movies, like the Friday mm-hmm. the 13th, I reckon you can still watch this as a kind of cool sci-fi. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Because sure. the writing on this is really fun. Because, I mean, the way they explain, okay, how are you going to get somebody who's earthbound and in our current technology, how the hell is he going to end up in space? And then, like, the way they introduce all the technology of the future and the way he utilizes this technology to make him a killing machine, even though unintentionally, but that's what happens. <laughs> I, it's just, I think it's a really well-written story. The dialogue right. is obviously lacking, but, I mean, the overall story is very entertaining. I like the special effects a lot in this movie, too. Like I said, this is the first time they didn't rely on practical effects. They aren't using dummies and, you know, fake blood they're using digital effects and i really like the transition i think they did a fantastic job in this movie the, the cgi is actually pretty good in this for 2001 mm-hmm. um, it's not yeah. noticeable yeah it, it yeah, you know it, yeah it stands up even today i think you can watch it right yeah. now 2016 and say yeah that looks believable that looks real um yeah it, it's pretty good they're, but oh, that's the other thing too i was going to ask you about um guys is um <laughs> like for instance where the the chief engineer on the ship and he's sort of saying, oh, uh, yeah, all the violence, all the gore, all the blood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. I've seen this all before. You're too young to remember the Microsoft Wars. <laughs> yeah. Which- yeah, that's, yeah, it's a weird in-joke. A little bit. I, I mean, because, I mean, there was a time for a minute where – uh, the government actually had to step in and sue Bill Gates because it was becoming a monopoly. It was yeah. getting to where every single computer was working on the Microsoft platform. So it's kind of funny that they throw a nod to that. But in a, I think in another decade, that joke probably won't make any sense, to be honest. I don't think no, many people are really going to remember that. Because no. especially now, since 
since with Android and Apple technology becoming so dominant, and Microsoft is kind of like, eh. It's a fucking Xbox. <laughs> They're going to think fucking <laughs> Xbox yeah. Microsoft. You mean, you mean the fucking Xbox company? Exactly, exactly. But, but, if you, but if you remember, it was around about the same time, The Simpsons actually did the same thing, where, where Homer started up his own computer company, and Bill Gates and Bill Gates yeah. came in to take it over. Um, so it's um, <laughs> um, it, it's yeah. So I mean, if you go back to two thousand and one, yeah, it was such a big deal because Microsoft just ruled the bloody planet. You know, they were just mm-hmm. everywhere. You, you, you couldn't do anything IT that wasn't Microsoft, except for right. you know a tiny little group of people yeah. who were still clinging on, you know, to their their Macintosh systems by their fingernails. Um, mm-hmm. But now, yeah, like you're saying, it's a different world where. You know, we live in a world of mobile computing where, you know, like in Europe, you know, the the number one, you know, operating system is Android. Mm. Uh, you know, oh, it, you know, in, in Australia, it's uh, it's it's Apple in the I don't know what it is in the United States. Um, I think it's kind of 50 50 over here. It's kind of Android Apple. I yeah, think mostly yeah. Apple. But yeah. And, and you've got people now that unless they're, let's say, video gamers or they, you know, do video editing and all this sort of stuff. They, they don't even have computers anymore. They just have no, they just have tablets and phones. Right. Mm. Right. You know, they, they exactly. don't even have Shifting. a computer anymore. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I see it every day. I work in a fucking school system, and all, all our books are giving away for we, – we just got a whole bunch of laptops now where the students check in at the first of the year. You pay deposit. That's your book. That's where your homework is. It's all emails, apps, and a fucking laptop, and books wow. are getting tossed in the trash. So it's a wow. changing world. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we, we, we mentioned that last week, didn't we? I think Velvet about how yeah. you know everything is now so computerized. Uh, you know, people don't even need to write anymore. You know, yeah, we, we just stupid. We just type. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it, it's um, pretty bad. It's pretty bad. You know, uh, we, ju- we we just type, and uh, I, I mean, also even just with languages. I mean, you don't need to learn another language now. All you just do is you just you know pop whatever somebody said into Google Translate, and it'll yep. tell you. I mean, yep. I, I've yeah, I've had. Yeah. I mean, I've had conversations with people in Spain and stuff. You know, like on Twitter, where we're speaking two different languages. And we're understanding what each. It's like it's like the Star Trek Universal Translator, you know. <laughs> yeah, because totally. It's, because yeah. it's like, I, I remember having a conversation once, and I was chatting with a girl in um, in Spain, and 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 she's typing in Spanish, I'm typing in English, but of course she's seen it in Spanish, and I'm seeing it in English. So it's 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 wild. It's just absolutely wild now. Yeah, the translation technology is actually really good now. I was blown away. I was like, wow, they um. Yeah, you really don't right. need to learn the language anymore. <laughs> it's such it's such it's such a shame though, because you know I always think everyone should you know if they possibly can should learn a second language. Absolutely. Uh, because it's a great way, you know, especially now, you know, like these days, if we want to, you know, stop the world going to fucking hell in a handbag, it would be a great way to get to know people in other cultures and other countries. And suddenly, if you're friends with them, you're not as eager to try to send people across to kill them. <laughs> right, you know? that's true. Yeah, uh, that's definitely true. You know, and the more different languages we speak, the more friends we've got in foreign countries and foreign cultures of different religions. Um, you know, hopefully we'll still be here after November nine. Oh God, oh, that's another conversation for today. That reminds me, though. Hey, talking I, about I love international, Mad Max and I can't wait for it. Talking about international wait. relations, or in this case, interspecial, what do you guys think of the uh, romance that they had budding between the android and the android's creator? They had ah. the whole. Uh, <laughs> you know, fair enough. Good to him, you know, I, I guess he wants to fuck a. That's just a fleshlight in the future. He just has his <laughs> fleshlight, and, and it's also, his, it's also well. his phone, it's also his computer. You know, it, it's just his fucking app for, the, for his fucking phone, but he also fucks it. Yeah, him. yeah, it, it is. I mean, it is. It is basically. Yeah, it, it's like if your iPhone came with an inflatable doll, just yeah, put them put together. It's the same thing, you know. Uh, <laughs> remember, 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 and then she she wanted nipples too because she was jealous of other girls having nipples. Like, yep. hey, yeah, she wanted to look like a human. <laughs> yep. was, yeah, that, that that made me laugh so hard the first time I see it. So they show this lady with her top up, and this guy's just staring at her chest, and she's like, "Yeah, is this it? What do you think? What do you think?" And he's like. 
like, yeah, no, it looks good. And then the nipples fall off. And he's like, dang it, I can't get them to stick. And he's like, KM, why do you want these? Well, so-and-so has them. Well, so-and-so's a human. And so KM's a robot who ends up fighting Jason. She's the one that really royally fucks Jason up with her big fucking gun. Did you guys like that? Did you guys like the whole fight scene between oh, yeah. the android and Jason? Oh, no, I, I thought, yeah, Lisa Ryder was, yeah, just- was really good playing that role. And just and, and the way she did it, like when she gets stabbed by Jason, and they think, and she goes, "Oh, that didn't go to plan." And then he walks up, and she goes, "Just tricking." That was fair, <laughs> you know. Um, that was that was really good, and um, and she kicks his ass. She seriously kicks his ass. Yeah, she blew his shit off. She I was like, oh, I was like. And I, I remember in the movie being happy, though. I was like, oh, I'm sad to see Jason die. But, I mean, that's the way to take him out. Blow his fucking limbs off. Blow his head off. He's not coming back. And then the movie's like, gotcha. He's on a sick bay, and here come the nanobots to reconstruct them. Like, yeah. <laughs> I really like See, you, you know, I, I remember the trailers, though, back in the day gave that away. Because I remember before we saw the movie. Yeah. Came out, oh, he's yeah. got an upgrade. And they kind of showed that. So I was kind of expecting that already. Like, all right, he's going to. She's going to destroy him. He's going to come back as Super Robot because they showed it. That's why I don't like about the fucking trailers on TV. They yeah, I, I, I really try to avoid yeah. trailers at all costs nowadays because they literally show the whole fucking movie. I'm like, why do you do that? I want to be surprised when I go to the movies. I want to be excited. I don't want to go in already knowing the entire story. I don't know why they do that. They think that's the average intelligence of the average moviegoer, I guess. Well, they're well, right God now. Damn. Look around, yeah. they're right. There's people you <laughs> yeah, know you're not wrong. in the but, world. You're not wrong. But the other thing, mm. though, is that it's like when he gets an upgrade, but the upgrade is basically, what, three quarters of the way through the movie. But as you mm-hmm. say, all the advertising, you sort of almost think he gets the upgrade from minute one. Right. Um, yeah, exactly. But, and it's, and it's uh, yeah, I, I mean, I totally agree. It's like, see, the other thing that, that you know, grinds my gears um, is um, – like, for instance, when they remake movies and they advertise it as, oh, you know, it's this movie, but it's actually a prequel to what they've remade. So, like, for instance, I remember, like, I was a huge fan of The Saint, and uh, I've always been a huge fan of Simon Templar. And then when they made the movie back in, oh, when was it, 1997 or something like that, it was a prequel. Um, I was a huge fan of The Man from Uncle. And when they only recently hmm. remade that movie, once again, it's a prequel. Like, they don't actually make the movie about the TV show or remake the movie. They actually go and make it a prequel for some reason. And and so people go and see it. And they say, well, hang on, this is not what I was expecting. Hmm. That's you know? disappointing. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't know why they do that. It's amazing how... Hollywood, especially, is so reluctant to give people what they really want. <laughs> right. I like, know. Oh, why don't they give people what they really want? And, for example, like Freddy versus Jason, this is in development hell for fucking ever. It's just like, what is the problem? You know, this is something people want to see. People will pay for this. And then also, if you're going to do it, why not give it a good story? Like, I actually like Freddy versus Jason, but I'm just saying it could have been better. Well, the interesting thing <laughs> yeah. the interesting thing. scene that bothered me deeply in that fucking movie. I think it was at the rave, and they were running away from Jason, and there's a I think it was Kelly Rouse. One of these motherfuckers had a stupid line like, uh oh, gotta punch it. No, some of these shitty, one quick, supposedly funny, quick lines, but you know, damn oh. in real life, if there's a killer yeah. and, and he's in a rave, no one's gonna be like, uh oh, you better punch a ticket, we're gonna be late. None of these stupid <laughs> fucking lines. Yeah. I hate shit like that. They, they do that. that upset me. I know. They do that, they do that James Bond thing. You know where the 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 quick line after something's just happened, like oh. like in Jason Jason X, where one of the soldiers gets killed and he he lands on a giant screw, this huge like two meter tall screw, and he so he actually wind the body winds its way down the know, screw, got screwed, and, yeah, and, yeah and, and then and then one of the other soldiers goes, no, nah, he's screwed. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Oh, that um, was kind of funny. You know, so but that's the humor. But it's that you know. But the other thing too is that. Um, like you were sort of talking, Velvet, um, before about the fact that 
a lot of people weren't too happy because of the way this was cross genre. Um, mm-hmm. And one of the things was that although this movie actually did make money, it actually got very, very bad reviews when it first came out yeah. in the United States. <laughs> um, I think they all did. Yeah, I think yeah. all Friday the Thirteenth movies have got but, bad but, reviews. But what, but what saved this? One of the, the financial savings of this movie was actually overseas sales. Because, uh, for instance, in countries like the United Kingdom and Australia, this movie was really, really popular and actually really? made a shitload That's of good. money. Um, yeah, cool. but it was it seemed to actually be more popular outside of the United States than it actually was inside the United States, which is interesting. <laughs> That's a shame. Well, like, well look at the way they had... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I would say take, take these three movies and they're all the same kind of horror in the future movies. You have Jason X... And then you have, um, you ever see that, uh, it's like Dracula 3000, or, or it's Dracula, he's on a fucking spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never watched it, but I've heard oh, of it. And, and, yeah. and, and you'll like this, Javel, because Dracula is dressed as your favorite fucking version. He's wearing a stupid tuxedo, and he's Patrick <laughs> Duffy. Yeah, he's just like I, just he's just like you know him from fucking Monster Squad, and it's, it's it's not a good movie. You have that one, and then you have Hellraiser Bloodline, which I love. Hellraiser, Pinhead's my favorite monster, but oh, yeah. that movie it, it, it it's it's a mixed bag. There's some things you can like, and there's a lot of things that are awful about that fucking movie. And out of those three movies, you can almost guarantee Jason X is the best fucking horror in the future movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that that Dracula. I think was is it Dracula three thousand or um. But it's it's uh, but it, it stars that you know you know the um, uh, Playmore it's Patrick uh, Duffy yeah and it, and it also had the step by step it had the deal from it had the deal from Baywatch um, uh, oh, oh I've forgotten her name who, who was in it and um, and it, it's 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 so bad because they're meant to be on a spaceship but they film it as a lot of B grade stuff is actually filmed <laughs> was you know, Coolio oh, in this movie the Coolio rapper and Coolio Debo. Yeah, so there's two oh guys, Coolio and Debo team up, and they play your stereotypical. Uh, they're like your black maintenance guys on a spaceship, uh-uh. and they're kind of like, "Yo, what's that noise over there? Let's, let's see what's happening." And they're they're fucking holding pistols to the side and gang banging in space. It's, oh my it's, god! But, but the, what? But the oh, other, I'm so glad I missed that. Oh, one. but the other, the other thing though, we should let everybody know is that it's actually so badly filmed because you know, <laughs> like, like like a lot of like a lot of you know like. Um, B grade stuff, you know, it's often filmed in a disused power station. I know Gary oh and I have God. often, yeah, have often, have often <laughs> joked about how Hollywood <laughs> must, you know, Hollywood must actually own about twenty disused power stations around the United oh, States totally. because they're totally. used so much. And but in this one, they're meant to be in a spaceship, but they film it in a disused power station. So you've got concrete walls and pipes and stuff, yeah. and they're pretending oh. it's a spaceship. You, you have spools. You have fucking pallets everywhere. Yeah. It's a fucking oh my god! <laughs> it's oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. bad. Yeah. Ew, gross. It is. It no, is they had, just so bad. <laughs> I, they, I really like the way that they did this, Jason. It doesn't look cheap. They did a good job with the special effects. Um, it had a. It didn't, like you said, it didn't do too well in the United States. It had an eleven million dollar budget, and it only grossed a little over twelve million. So it just made like a million dollar profit in the U.S. But it's definitely found life. Because of you know uh, DVD and online downloads and just the cult film status that it's achieved with its crossover into sci-fi. And the other thing too, I will say is that if you actually get this on DVD, um, there is actually audio commentary uh, that comes with this Ooh, movie as well, which is always that sounds cool, fun. Which is always cool. Yeah. So, um, you know, so yeah, it, it's. Look, I'd say to anyone, you know, look. I mean, look, if you're, if you're oh, a boy. Jason fan, you will have seen it already, okay? But if you're not, but you still like a bit of sci-fi and a bit of cult cinema, give this one a try. Because if you like sci-fi, you'll probably like this one. Even though you're going to sort of say, oh, it's a Jason movie, it's a slasher movie, it's a horror movie. But it's more than that. It's a sci-fi movie too. So, you know, give it a try. You know, that's what I would say. Oh, definitely. If you like the entire... Friday the 13th genre, like the entire Friday the 13th series, um, you'll probably like this, but at the same time, you have to go in with an open mind because this does cross genre, but it's still, it's got a ton of kills. It's still, (laughs) 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at a the picture that you just <laughs> sent us. Sorry about that. <laughs> but, but yeah, I definitely highly recommend. This is uh, my favorite Friday the 13th film. And I um, also look at the way yep. they marketed it. I mean, they, they make fun of themselves in this movie, but at the same time, they respect the audience. They're like, okay, we're going to, we're going to, you know, give nods to some of the classic Jason stuff. But at the same time, we're going to show you a lot of new stuff. We're trying to give Jason not only an upgrade physically, but in storytelling wise, as well as um, the marketing. They knew they couldn't call this movie Friday the 13th Part 10 because people are just going to be like, oh, fuck that movie. But Jason X? Yeah. I mean, like, this This is the modern <laughs> This is the modern Jason, people. Give it a chance. So, yeah, yeah no, I yeah. love it. And, love and, it, love and, it, love and it. you know, and, and it just to other people who, you know, are sort of starting to get into cross-genre, you know, like people who, are, you know, a number of years ago discovered movies such as Dog Soldiers and, and things like that. You know? Great movie. Mm. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Like in fact, we, we, we've got to do that on this show, I think, actually, Dog Soldiers soldiers um but hmm. it's um the um you know these cross genre movies now are getting more and more and more and more popular and you know mm-hmm. and jason x was actually sort of one of the first i would say it was I, one of the early i think ones. so too yeah i think so too definitely you know most definitely so thumbs up definitely. from everyone absolutely Oh, well, yeah. you know, I'll watch it great movie <laughs> i have the dvd i have a stupid action figure somewhere i don't know where it is but yeah, I, I love that fucking flick, man. It's my very favorite Jason flick. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So, so you know, and I think it's it's readily available on iTunes and Netflix as well. So, you know, it's pretty easy to uh, uh, to get. But as I said, if you want, you know, with the audio commentary and everything, the DVD I think these days probably sells for about two dollars or something. So, I mean, get the DVD if, if if for the kills only feature yep. alone. I can't stress how great that feature is. <laughs> yeah. There's no story, no context, just nonstop Jason kicking everyone's ass. <laughs> yeah, that's where you watch. It. <laughs> so no, so definitely whichever way you want to see it, go out and get it. It's it's fantastic. Absolutely. Well, I, I reckon yeah. I reckon that's that's about it, don't you think, guys? We've we're actually God, I think this is the longest show we've ever done. Actually, yeah, to be honest. Show I, um, yeah, I, I thought we would go long, but not this long. Um, this is great. So uh, <laughs> no, it was absolutely great fun. It was absolutely great fun. It was fantastic having you on, uh, Ken Kenny. Oh, really enjoyed it. it. Appreciate um, it. Yeah, thanks yeah. for coming along. It was uh, really great fun. So uh, I suppose we should wrap up and uh, just, you know, all the usual stuff. Um, Of course, remember, you can follow us on Twitter, which now the address has changed. Because as we said originally, it's not the Zayas Report anymore. It's now Mm. uh, the Cult Movie Show. So the Twitter handle is simply Cult Movie Show. So that's pretty pretty easy to remember. Um, You can follow me, of course, on Twitter. I am... I am Martini Super Martini Dry. Martini Super Dry. That's <laughs> right. I always forget. Um, so you can follow me on on Twitter as well. Uh, uh, you can, of course, go to the Cult Movie Show on Facebook if you want as well. Uh, always, of course, remember, um, check out the OFTU podcast, Only Funny to Us. They help out a lot. Um, so, uh, so please check them out on Twitter. Uh, of course, thank you as always to Alana Evans, who provides the music. So thank you, Alana. Please follow her, which of course is Alana Evans. It's, 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 I think it is. Um, yes. so, uh, so please, of course, follow her and, um, guys, take it away. Okay. And so I'm Vel. Rose, if you want to know more about me and see a little bit more of my adult side, please be 18 or older and feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at OMG, it's Velvet. And Count Kenny, take it away. Plug anything you want to plug, go for it. Hey, I'm the human piece of garbage on Twitter. You can find me at Kenny is Scum. It's pretty much just my YouTube life. You can watch what I like. I don't give a shit if you do or not, but good for you. You can find me on, uh, you can find me on Instagram taking pictures of my dogs and my knives at King underscore fucking patriarch or King underscore patriarch. It's, and if you want to hit Redwall Radio, man, we, we got a show we do ourselves. I got my own, my own solo show. It's called Friendless. It's about 20, 30 minutes of me ranting and talking about shit that behooves me. <laughs> eh, it's not bad. It's, it's pretty decent. Like again, like I tell bitches, get ready for a nice, deep, slow, and mediocre fucking. You know. <laughs> and, 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 and then we got we got the show that that's the main Red Wall show. You got me, Vel, and uh, shouts out to my buddy Danae, Tough Nerd Toys. Hit him on eBay. Go buy one of his fucking toys, which I show you. They're clean action figures. He makes sure he doesn't 
keep a mess. Past that, <laughs> um, you, you can hit us on YouTube, Redwall, uh, Redwall Visual. Right now, it's it's yeah, there'll be some videos if you want to look at uh, some product reviews. I'll be reviewing a great knife from Magnum Works, makes custom knives all day long. Past that, there'll be uh, clips of our shows and all that on our YouTube page and videos of me like, killing a bunch of innocent people on Fallout on PC. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so True. yeah, I also co-host with Count Kenny and Uncle Beetle, or as we say, Danae, on Redwall yeah. Radio. So you can check out Redwall Radio on Twitter and Instagram, at Redwall Radio. The podcast for that is coming soon. Oh, we're on Facebook, too. Again, Redwall Radio, same fucking page. <laughs> and and if, right I didn't shout, if I didn't shout out my family, they, they'd fucking choke me and leave me dead in the alleyway. Please do. Team Silver Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Team Silver BJJ.com. Um... <laughs> I always shout them out because if I don't, I'd feel like a miserable piece of garbage. So, TeamSilverBJJ.com, the finest Brazilian jiu-jitsu in the Bay Area. Come learn something useful for all ages. Men, women, it don't matter. Come get choked out. <laughs> right on. Excellent. Excellent. So, I think that's um, that's a wrap. So, uh, so that was podcast 17. Uh, awesome. Thank, thanks, everyone, for uh uh, for today, thanks everyone for listening. Um, we will, of course, be back uh, next week with podcast 18. And uh, I don't think we've worked out what movies we're going to do next week, but I'm sure we're going to have some brilliant ones or some <laughs> not so brilliant ones, as the case might be. Um, but look, thanks everyone for listening. And also, thanks everyone for uh, supporting. Uh, I found out actually yesterday that we got a listener from Kurdistan. Yes, oh, I'm wow. not joking. So, um, wow. uh, yeah, that was honestly really kind of cool. I was not expecting that. So, uh, wow. so thank you, everyone, you know, who's listening. It really does mean a lot. So that's a wrap. Thanks, guys. Right on. Take care. Talk to you guys mm-hmm. next week. And uh, we will leave you, as always, with the lovely uh, and charming and incredibly talented Alana Evans and Perfect. Doesn't matter.